Hey, Matt with the Detail Shop. God, long time since I have done a live or any work in the old garage. So thanks for joining me here. Give it a few minutes, let some people get on here. Um, I hope your Saturday night is going well. Our Saturday night is going well. How you doing, Lee Dodge 74? STI notes, welcome. How you guys doing? So anyway, so live tonight uh, in the garage, the old detail shop. You know, I have a new shop where we're at. Um, glad you're doing good, man. We're doing good as well. Um, so, you know, new shop. Every We do things other places. You know, this was the home of the detail shop. God, forever. But uh, my son bought a truck. There's Max the detailer in the back. Probably haven't seen him in forever. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Um, he bought a new truck, 2017 Chevy Silverado. <clears throat> um, great deal, 40,000 miles on the truck. Um, it is the work truck version, LT work truck version. You know, so it's got the black bumpers and the rubber interior, which, you know, look, when you're 18 years old, uh, he bought this, he's almost 19, but he bought this on his own. Uh, own credit, own money. It's a nice truck uh, for a good kid. So some of the things he wanted to do is he wants to pull his Silverado badges off and the 4x4 stuff um, and make them all black. So that's what we're doing. Um, it is kind of uh, you know stuff he ordered off of Amazon. And we'll kind of talk about that, especially with the Silverado letterings. Um, you know, a lot of times, something that happens within detailing is, is we do uh, a lot of times remove a lot of badges, a lot of decals, and put new ones on. Um, the challenge we find, and it's the case with this as well, many people order a very inexpensive version um, of things specifically from like Amazon, things like that. And what happens is stuff doesn't always match up. So, you know, we'll talk about the process of debadging it and doing it. Uh, hang out and be cool. And uh, let's get some stuff done. So let's bring it in here. I know it's reversed. Camera slips down. I can't see the stuff, so bear with me. So first we're going to do is pull all the Silverado stuff off. Let me grab the other badges so I can show you what I'm talking about. Here's the, uh, here's the issue at hand. The issue at hand is, um, you know, he wants to pull these old chrome ones off, which are the factory ones, and put these on here. And, and part of the challenge with these um, is kind of the way they're designed. If you've ever installed a factory one, these are not factory, these are relatively cheap Amazon ones. Um, what I found when I did the passenger side, and you can see now, and, and I hope my son who's at work right now, um, sees this, this is the challenge. So initially, and I, I think I, no, I haven't posted it on TikTok. I'll post the time lapse of me doing the passenger door. Cause I want you guys to see, you know, typically after you remove these badges or before you remove the badges, you want to make a template for yourself. Uh, with tape and I use a, a marker to kind of mark off my areas. Um, that way there, I know that we're reinstalling um, these in as close of an area as possible to his original. So if you just take your time, you can do it. It's really not hard. Um, and we'll talk about required tools. I'll grab everything right now. Uh, you can all do it at home. <laughs> Sorry, I'm coming back. Coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. Sorry, there's not many lights. I don't have much here in the house anymore, which is kind of weird. Um, so to do this at your own home, which anybody can do, this is really not a, a high-level uh, skill type of project of debadging, either de just debadging a car, which a lot of people debadging. I personally love to debadge. I hate badges on cars. So it'd be the same process, um, but we'll add in that step of reapplying um, a new emblem or decal or whatever it is. We'll do a decal too. I can swing you guys around. Uh, so I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, we do a ton of them. I will tell you just a few things, kind of like the issue here with the Silverado, as you can see, you know, this is the, the kit. The challenge is, is that it doesn't match up to the original size of the emblems. So we'll talk about how to manage that and how to deal with that. Um, but what we find, and even this happened last week, uh, we're doing a frame off restoration 
on a 69 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Car's almost ready to go last minute. Client brings in a bunch of decals that he wants on the car. Fine. You know, it, it's not our taste, but my taste. Um, but he wanted them. And, you know, they were decent graphics, but they weren't the ones that we were recommending because he wanted to save some money. And, the guy, and look, the guy spent a fortune on the car. I mean, well over six figures on this restoration between the donor car and, and the cost to us. But the challenge was is because the graphics weren't the best, they weren't matching up. We had to go through like three sets to finally get it right. Um, so number one, order original parts if possible. Um, we typically have a lot more success with original factory uh, either emblems or decals or badges, whatever they are. So number one, order factory if possible. The installation goes better and the fitment is better. Um, number two, when you want to talk about vinyl appliques, <clears throat> and I've had a ton of people, and I'm not talking wraps, really, um, not wraps, but uh, hey, what's going on, Extreme Guys? Sorry, I'm just kind of BSing here. Um, <clears throat> but with a lot of these <clears throat> cheaper vinyl products that you find, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, they just either don't adhere well or they don't want to fold over. So again, quality equals better results in most cases when we're talking about this. So we'll get into it. So things you're going to need. You can get yourself a heat gun. This is just a Harbor Freight heat gun. That's it. You're going to heat up each one, get your dental floss or fishing line and pull it off. That's what we're going to do. So hope you guys are doing well. It's going to work. It's funny we talk about in detailing not applying too much heat to paint you know we, we, we talk about that a lot especially on clear coats uh, you got to be very careful so wrap your dental floss find the spot hopefully your dental floss isn't cheap and I'm out of my normal stuff so you may have to heat this up more If you guys don't mind, share my life if you guys don't mind, by the way. But anyway, so um, what I was saying about applying heat to panels uh, as detailers, you know, that's kind of a big no-no. You know, you got to be really careful. We don't want to overheat a panel and, and cause blistering or damage. Um, and then we take heat guns to cars when we put PPF or remove badges and then we heat them up. So... But anyway, that's it. So you hit it, heat it up with a heat gun, get your string, take it down, and that's it. Um, got questions, throw them out in between uh, letters here. We'll get them answered. Or there's, uh, I see a few, quite a few um, uh, very good detailers in this room here. So ask away. They are more than welcome to answer questions, too. I got Frenchies and uh, interested in... I, I'm not interested in any Bulldogs. But I would love them, but... Um, <coughs> I already have three cats and one dog, so I think we're good. Hey, buddy. Big H, how you doing? Doing a little debadge in here. Big H, you get those AirPods or a headset yet so we can go live again? See how easy they come off. So again, heat gun, dental floss. What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Three guys and two dogs. What color French poodles do you have? Yes, it does. Yeah, so Big H, SNS Detailing, they were talking about heat gunning and uh, plastic razor blades for um, 
pinstripes. It does that or, uh, you know, a 3M wheel works well. Uh, one thing to talk about pinstripes and pinstripe removal, and, and Big H and I talked about this when he was doing his recently, um, is you do have to be careful on some older cars. If pinstripes have been on a long time, you know, and pinstripes really is not, I know dealers throw them on, but real pinstriping from a long time ago, if they've been on paint for a very, very long time, you'll actually get where it's eaten into. Remember, adhesive is caustic to paint, um, which is always a challenge when going to remove these, especially if they're on a very, very old car. Um, you will get etching into the paint um, where those emblem stickers were. So just be very careful in knowing when you're removing uh, stickers, emblems, pinstriping that's been on paint for a long time, like 15 or 20 years or longer, the paint is probably not in the best shape underneath that. So you're going to have to to address that with that customer up front because if not, you know, you polish it out, you do all the stuff, and there is no more ghosting from adhesive, but there's now, um, now an area where the clear coat or the paint, wherever it's been, um, is now lower because it's eaten it away and the customer's not going to like that. So just, uh, you have earphones, two pairs. I'm ready. Cool. Um, let's see here. There you go, buddy. So anyway, just to be live, we got a special guest coming on. Can maybe let him moderate, answer some questions. Make sure you follow my big buddy here, Mr. Big H. He's under there as a Mr. Canadian, but uh, SMS detailing. Make sure you follow him. He's a good dude. I sent you a live invite. You? What's going on? What's going on, buddy? What's up, buddy? Oh, you're so echoey. Huh? Oh, there we go. That's better. You're still a little echo. How's it going, man? Let me get the headphones. Yeah, get your headphones. I might just pull up outside. What oh, is? Uh, ooh, a blue. Oh, yeah, that, that, it would be, so tonight, by the way, we're talking a detailing and French bulldog. Buddy, uh, Los Reyes bulldog. He's got some bulldogs. Right there. Frenchies are awesome. They are. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our board Now, if anybody's on this live that's like a dealer principal or an executive at a major auto group, please stop putting those on cars, okay? They're tacky. No one is ever going to buy a car from you because they saw your sticker on the back of a car, okay? They look horrible. Please stop doing that. Now, this black stuff is kind of a pain in the butt to get off, and if I was at the shop, I would just use a bunch of other things to address those, but uh, I'm doing it at home, and this would kind of be very similar to the way, you know, just a, any type of weekend warrior or enthusiast would do it, which is kind of real basic stuff. So that's it's kind of good that we're doing it this way, you know, and I think we forget sometimes as detailers, you know, we've got every tool known to man to help us efficiently do things, but... A lot of people that follow us or watch our TikToks or Instagrams or Facebooks, you know, may not have those things. So, you know, nice to keep in mind. Just heat them up, heat them up.
Got those no earbuds feedback. yet, buddy? Yeah, no feedback, right? Sound good. What's going on with you, man? Nice. Not a whole lot, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, this is like old school. I haven't done a live in this garage in probably six months. Yeah, that's about right. What do you what'd you work on this week? Anything good? Uh nada. Just get my business together. Oh yeah. No, I know. Well, I will tell you. It pretty much from you know Friday going forward, I mean guys, business is going to slow down dramatically between mm -hmm. You know, unless you live in California, Arizona, Southern Texas, Southern Florida, you know, the, 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 the Golden Coast is there, you know, where it's warm, you know, detailing slows down dramatically for most detailers. You know, the bulk of the industry is mobile, and this is a, a skinny time of the year. I know, you know, a lot of guys talked, a lot of guys this week said they're starting to see some slowdown, um, which, you know, you just have to prepare for that. So, if you, you know, if you're going to pursue a career in detailing, you're going to have to understand if you live somewhere other than where it's warm all year around, you know, your business is going to be seriously dampened between November and February. Um, so that's, that's not that unusual. What, what was the last thing you worked on? Was it that cobalt? Um, no, I did a ceramic on a WRX, that uh, light blue, that crazy blue one. Nice. Um, that was a nice job. So what are you, what are you using for ceramic? Uh, I gotta look. I had the O'Keefe's 37, and um, there's this other one. A friend of mine is a distributor for this other company. I think, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but that's what we use for the um WRX. Nice, yeah. I've been getting a lot of uh guys and some requests to try Fireball. Um, oh, I never heard I of it. A lot of, a lot of guys are using it. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I think it's Justin. I'd have to look. There's um, the owner of the company sent me a request on Facebook to join his um, group. Um, and I've got quite a few buddies. Uh, Driven Elite Detailing, he's using Fireball in uh, Chicago. I think Mike Quinn's on System X. I also believe Olson's, Jake Olson's using Fireball. And they're reporting really, really good results. Erasure Wheel oh, works really? great. Yeah, no, detailers. Ismail, you're correct. I was talking about that. So I'm at home right now. I've got nothing. So, you know, I used to do everything in here, but you are correct. So one thing that works amazing on this stuff and on um, pinstripes is a 3M eraser wheel. Um, it's a rubber wheel. It doesn't mar the paint. You still, I would still recommend polishing afterwards, even if you're putting some on a towel and using your fingers. Um, but a 3M eraser wheel, it's designed to go the back up to the drill, and it's just a rubber wheel. And I mean, in like three seconds, this would be gone. And then a little, you know, gooby gone or some IPA and just wipe it down with some solvents. But yeah, so unfortunately, I don't have anything here because I'm at the house, so we're using the old basic method. I don't even have plastic erasers or plastic uh, blades. That gooby gone, the spray one, not the gel, is excellent too. I put that on the um the panel after I uh, finished um putting the thing off the pinstripe. Uh -huh. Yeah, the uh, the stuff that I I grab just ran to the store and grab some stuff, but I've got the gel. The gel's the bomb. Yeah. Uh, you know that's not. If you guys haven't done PPF, let me tell you. That's the one that thing about removing old PPF is that. You can, if the paint doesn't come off, that's the worst part. But if the paint stays on the, the car, not on the PPF, um, you know, you can get some very brittle edge stuff. Like, you know, for instance, Lexus, Mercedes, and Porsche, you know, on the back of their fenders have always put some of that. So if you're trying to get some of it off of like old mirrors, like the factory stuff, um, Gooby Gone does work pretty good. There's a solvent that I use that's amazing, but. It's really auto body solvent, sol, S-O-L. That stuff works really well. But it's really not a consumer product. It's only sold like body shop. But uh, it works really well. I actually use that stuff. I actually cut it. I have different concentrations, and I actually cut this uh, solvent that's actually a body shop solvent that I use in the in replacement of IPA 
and I know that it is awesome stuff. So. Let's see what's going on. Miracle Detailing, Kevin. How we doing, my buddy? Kevin. It's been forever since I've been in the old... Uh, I got Sun Parker's truck in. It's a 2017 Chevy Silverado. We are Chevy fans in this house. We're all car fans, but we are primarily Chevy fans. Um, and uh, real nice little truck. We're just pulling the badges off. He bought some new ones. We're going to pull the dealer sticker off. We're we'll the 4 by 4s He wants the bow ties, and I'll show that. Um, he wants those. He's got some vinyl he wants me to put over them. I've seen that stuff before. I've had a customer send me that stuff, and it's junk, so I don't think it's going to work. So... That's what we got kicking this, this night. Big H, what are you doing tonight? I'm home with the kitties till the wife comes home, man. I think she gets off a tour at uh like seven. Oh shit, it's almost eight o'clock. After eight uh, o'clock. I'm the, I'm at home, man. I was hoping for some Nick basketball or something, but there's nothing on tonight. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Gotta wait for the, weather, the what's giants the to get there in New York tonight. Oh, it's, it's it's horrible. It's like 38 degrees. I usually don't try to come out if it's like 45 or less. In the past two weeks, you had like one day of 50. And because I'm doing it out of my garage at the current moment. I understand. You know, I, I it's, just, like I I just, it's like I was for 30 years. It's where everything was. Yeah. Garage. Man, I, I, I'm it's on cold. a market though, man. I'm on a market. I'm looking for a three or four bay. I'm trying to get that together for the spring. Oh, yeah. You know. Miracle showing off. Miracle saying that his, his AC is on where he is. Eh, yeah. <laughs> Our friend Cajun Kevin, Miracle Detailing, lives in that beautiful state of Louisiana. Oh, man. It's and, uh, man. He's a, a few degrees lower towards that equator than us, us right. northerners up here. So uh, a, little bit, a little bit warmer where he's at. My, uh, my wife's up right now in Pensacola. My son John. Ev is a grinder. You familiar What's with that? Exquisite, right? Exquisite, Exquisite. He's a grinder. He's out there no matter rain, sleet. I think the only thing can stop him is like five feet of snow. That, that man is out there no matter what the weather is. Dude's out there. It's it's negative twelve, negative twelve. Right. Detailing cars with a sign out and a smile. Yeah, I said Ev, it before, Ev, man. Ev, that Ev, that guy, Exquisite's a, just a flippant hustler. I mean, the kid yeah. is a hustler. He's not a kid. Man. I mean. Straight hustle. To us, to, to us, he is. <laughs> it, it, right, right. No, he is. He's a hustler, man. God, if I can clone, if I can clone exquisites and sell them to detailers. Right. Yeah, they can't go wrong with a guy like that. Right? He's a good one. Well, it's true, man. I mean, you know, look, I, I just told somebody this yesterday. I said... I'm definitely not the smartest guy in the world. I know that, okay? Um, but I will say this. I'll outwork anybody. And That's outworking fun. people is the name of the game. Best thing ever, taking the old dealership sticker off. Yeah, pull that sucker right off. You don't have a razor blade, a plastic razor blade? No, I'm at my house. I literally have nothing. Oh man! It's a scraper. It's close. It's good. It's easy. No big deal. Matt, you've been doing some extraordinary work at the shop that you're at, though, bro. Yeah. Hey, my man, it's what's Max happening? The Max the it's detailer. What's going on, bud? Nothing. Yeah, we're How trying. How are you, buddy? So, come over here, Max. Say hey. Hey. What up, Max? Yeah, let's. Uh, we'll talk about that. So. You know, I've been in my garage forever, and, you know, the, the thing was is to do some of the things I wanted to do is I had to get out of this garage. Right. Well, you know, as you are well aware, and, and everyone else is as well, I don't know if they heard, but the real estate's really expensive. So, yeah, for instance, literally me. behind me, um, across the highway, okay? Say hi, Chance. Say hi to uh, Matt. What's going on, buddy? How you doing, big man? Literally across the street from me, on the other side of the highway, is a 
old firehouse. It's like the perfect setup for me. Okay, three massive bays, air system. I mean, like it was turnkey for the property, the land. They want like a million and a half dollars. It's just, it's you can't make money at that, you know. So you gotta come in heavy and hard with that, man. Oh God! I mean, you'd have to be doing straight PPF. You'd have to be a PPF monster and be mm-hmm. cranking out PPF jobs a day. And reps, PPFs and reps. Yeah, I mean that's 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 all the way you're going to be able to make that money is if you're doing stuff like that. Which I, that's not what we do. And I and I do some high end stuff, and we charge a lot for what we do. That's a mm-hmm. big number, man. So, like many. Um, of us were all challenged trying to find employees there we have several restoration slash car collectors in the st louis area that are in need of a high-end detail and the challenge that a lot of them have had is just the pure lack of you know people or a person that can run their program that have the skill to complete the cars that they need right um and so they're willing to hire third-party detailers to come in for 90 days and set up a program. And I did a couple of those over the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but then recently there's a, a restoration place in St. Louis called It's Alive. Mm-hmm. And they do restoration and they're bringing on sales as well. And so, you know, when they buy these very high-end cars at Gooding Auctions and all these places where they buy them, you know, Believe it or not, 95% of them are not very well detailed. And so when they're trying to buy these cars and they'll put work into them and they're trying to sell them for two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, you know, they need a wheels off, you know, undercarriage, engine compartment, trunk, you know, potentially full wet sand, high, 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 high end detail. The whole bit. Right. So his issue was he has a building that he bought, kind of long story short, he's got a building that he bought that he can only store cars and he can't do it, but if he leases it to someone, um, mm-hmm. the building can be used. So that's effectively kind of what we did. We kind of formed a partnership here, and I'm providing detailing services, obviously, for his uh, cars that he purchases, and he doesn't do a lot. He's not real high value. Maybe he might sell, I don't know, maybe 50 cars in 2023. So it's not like it's a ton of stuff. However, um, he has clients that want to do full restorations. The problem is, you know, full restoration can be starting at 50 to 75,000 bucks. And it can be upwards of a hundred thousand. Right. And so right. what happens is we can do a restoration detail to where we'll keep the car for five days. It may be 15 or 20,000 bucks. But that car is going to leave that place. I mean, next level, next level stuff. I mean, I've got a on the lift right now. We've been working for the last three days on the undercarriage until our dry ice system comes in on a 53 Jaguar. Oh, I can't wait for you to start using that. Yeah, it was it's a Jaguar XJ140 fixed head coupe. Um, mm-hmm. Original car. The undercarriages are our main issue. Um, we're having a lot of rust? A lot of surface rust. It's only surface rust, okay. thank God. I and mean, we went through that car to make sure there was nothing that was going to make it an issue. Mm-hmm. All surface rust. So we're going to have to wire wheel most of that and then paint most of the undercarriage uh, of this vehicle. So, um, and we'll I do that it. as part I can't of. Can't wait till you get that ice, that that a dry ice machine. I want to see how you work that. Uh, that's a, that's a next level issue right there. Chance, close the right for me. Yeah, so dry ice. So, you know, dry ice, I really feel is the true future of detailing. And I'm going to tell you guys why. Can you guys hear me okay? Sorry for moving around. Um, dry ice, in my opinion, is really going to be the next, the next big thing in the future of detailing for various reasons. Number one, um, the machines are highly affordable. You can, through dry yeah, ice systems, dry ice energy, or dry systems, See, buy their Evo ISO Hi. 22 for 6300 bucks. I think, on Matt Morvan's site, who is basically the distributor for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so that's number one. So, you know, when you're talking dry ice, 
the machine is relatively inexpensive these days. What people don't understand though is you still need to have a lift. A bin pack lift installed is like nine to not between nine and eleven thousand dollars. You're gonna have to have a rocking um, compressor because you have to drive 28 CFM continuously. And you're going to have to have an amazing dryer because you cannot have a drop of water in the system because everybody's used dry ice. When you put water on dry ice, what happens to it? It makes big clouds. And so what happens is if you have water in that system, you're going to have a vapor cloud so big that you're literally not going to be able to see where the tip of your dry ice wand is at and you can damage things. So um, to get all that, you're talking uh, honestly probably in the $50,000 range, mm -hmm. all in, and the compressor, the lift, the dryer, and just the setup that you would need for everything. You'll need some other small tools, but the beautiful thing is, is the, the labor hour for a dry ice cleaning ranges in the U.S. market between $250 and $400 an hour. So, you know, when you talk about initial investment for dry ice, um, and sorry for anybody who's here just to kind of watch a real basic uh, in the garage thing. This has kind of turned a little technical. Um, but, you know, you're talking $50,000 in um, for the initial investment. And dry ice, depending on your area, can range for the for the six millimeter pellet that you need anywhere between 40 cents to two dollars um per hundred pounds sorry per pound so in our area it's about 65 cents, 65 cents a pound um and on an average undercarriage you're going to use depending on the size of the car and the conditions you know, two to 300 pounds per car. So if you figure, you know, it's 60 cents a pound, let's call it 300 pounds, it's $180 of dry ice. And then you got man hours, you know, so if you're paying, a, you know, a technician 25 bucks an hour to do this, or you're doing it as an individual, you know, at an undercarriage, let's say, you know, we'll take you, let's just call it 20 hours. And you're talking five grand, it's a money making operation. Absolutely. It really is. Um, and so one of the things that we're talking about doing is offering kind of like a $10,000 detail to where the whole car is cleaned with dry ice. Literally every inch of the car except for the leather will be cleaned with the dry ice. The benefits is that it's not abrasive, but it literally takes it down to original. So for like tires, the tires look like they just came out of the hole. Um, and then obviously offering up to a five-step paint correction. So that would be a 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 mm -hmm. wet sand and then a rotary cut and polish. So that's going to be the five steps. Then obviously full interior and then a five-year coating on the car. Um, and we're heavily considering that as just an option for people um, and legitimately charging, I think, like 10 grand. This is a flat rate for cars. Right. Um, for the enthusiasts. Yeah, and believe it or not, I've already talked to some of our Porsche Club Amer America's local guys in our area. They were like, I mean, I had like five guys who were like, yeah, they have zero issue paying that for that type of detail. Um, plus, we have some other of those, uh, I guess you could say they're technically competitors of our core business of what we do to some degree because we're going to start selling cars, but we have some other. You know, like with the St. Louis Car Museum, uh, that would potentially outsource, could potentially, that would be part of my business plan is some of these other very high-end places that we have in the area that when they have a special car, mm -hmm. we could do work for them on, on my end from a detailing perspective, because there's only uh, one other person right now that's even offering it in the area, so... Frozen. Are we still on? Yeah. Frozen sorry. A while. Okay, sorry. My, my little battery flashed there. Um, but long story short, I think once we get our, the word out that what we're doing and we demonstrate it to people, I don't want to talk too much about business strategy because um, mm -hmm. I want to look the cat out of you, you know how that goes already. <laughs> but 
I have a pretty good idea of how to get this off. It's, it's going to be some initial investment. Um, and, and all it is is it's just inviting kind of key members of the area mm -hmm. uh, within particular circles. And I would offer to do like their undercarriage at no cost to them. So again, hard cost would be my own individual labor, which is free. Mm -hmm. um, and then the cost of the dry ice. So it's not like it's going to you know, break the bank for me. It might cost me 500 bucks out of pocket. But I think once I can invite a group of people in and, and do a live demonstration of it, uh, they'll, be, they'll be on point for that. I'll tell you what, I really wish I had my three inch that's with a me. Whole, that's a whole other avenue of uh, revenue what? right there. A different that's kind what? of avenue of revenue. And I know it's in my awesome. area, I'd be the only person offering that because there's no one around here that's, you know, that's doing that. Right. And you're Long Island, right? Yeah. What part of Long Island? Nassau County. Nassau County. Okay. Yeah. I remember Nassau County, my friend. I was there for yeah, two months back in 2012. Yeah, you told me about it. But, but not Katrina, but um, Sandy, right? Sandy, yeah. That was, God, that was... Yeah. Man, that Something was crazy. Else. If you go look at my Facebook... And you go to my photos and you go back a while back. I posted a photo dump from that time frame. And I mean, to see, because um, I was in Long Beach primarily. Long Beach got devastated during that. Yeah, it was that's bad. about 10 minutes from me. Yeah, no, so, and I was there in, uh, uh, I was think uh, back. So I was in, on Long Island, but I was in a bunch of different fire departments there individually. Um, I have to go back and look at the mm -hmm. picture. It's sad. Um, but an amazing time. Love New York. I love New Yorkers. They're all great people. They're all great people. You just joined us. Matt with the detail shop. Big H with s, &S Detailing. He's kind of my moderator this evening while I'm working. We're uh, yeah. <laughs> doing work for the children's tonight. This is my, my oldest child's vehicle. He uh, just bought it, 2017. He wants uh, new black emblems and everything else. And he said, hey, Dad, um, shows up earlier today <coughs> with <coughs> his truck and all these things and says, can you do this for me? And I said, sure, why not? I'm not doing anything on a Saturday night. I'm old. I wish it was at the shop, though, because it would, I probably would have been done by now. Yeah, you got all your stuff there. Oh, I know. This is just a pain in the butt. You know, because one of the things you can do when you kind of still have this stuff here is you can take an old, like, McGuire's cutting disc or blue pez, blue pez blue wall, throw some compound and just buzz over that. That'll remove it all. I'm going to go grab um, some clay to get this last little part off. Whoa. <clears throat> move it up. Big Mike, what's happening, man? Please don't get banned tonight. <laughs> what happened? Or kicked off. What happened? <laughs> Talking to Mike. Tell him not is to he, get kicked off he, or banned tonight. Did you? Look, kick, he, yeah, let, have him come in. Can he get on? He sent him a, I think he sent a request already. Oh, sorry. To you. Well, there you go. Is he back on now? There, there you are. Is. What's up, man? Hey, up, how's bro? Going? Welcome back from jail. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I still can't believe that one. I know what it was. I looked right at the timestamp. We were talking about MGs, and I said, "MG, don't do it. I'm not don't gonna do say. it." <laughs> so apparently, the idea is is that, that, that you probably get away with it saying it once, but if you say it multiple times, yeah. Like and then, of course, the worst part about the whole thing was was losing the appeal. Because you know whoever whoever looked at that appeal, and probably what is probably automatic, but if somebody looked at that appeal, you know good and well somebody didn't physically look at that appeal. No. Right. No. Nah. You uh, know, it's, yeah. Well. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. The times yeah. I've ever been kicked from anything it was that time. And the other time was we were in a, I was in a, in a, in a uh, I was in a body forum talking about how to mount the, um, the uh, jammed plates on the old school um, S-U-I-C-I-D. <laughs> I don't want to say Doors. it. 
But right. the, yeah. doors, the doors that, that go inside, I was talking about yeah. that. Got kicked for talking about those doors. <laughs> It's yeah, I think computer, it's, man. it's also a little bit of a. I, I, I think it's all AI at this point. I don't yeah. really think yeah. anybody's physically can anything because if they did, it was like one a while back. They took a video down. You know, I do wedded a, a video on TikTok. It's like, and I'm just like do wedding. I'm not even saying anything. I'm just literally watching the video, and. You know, it got taken down. And it's like people can just report a video or a live for anything. I mean, the most ridiculous thing. And then they'll just automatically take it down and suspend you. And it's like, uh, what you know. One of the funny ones is I watch a guy, and I don't know if you've seen him. It's a dude with the big beard that does all the he's from North Carolina and he does all the, he comments on all the weird cooking stuff. Yes. Oh my dude, I'm telling you, you might because you have to see this dude. He's from North Carolina. You can't miss him. He's a good old country boy. They put cooking up. And he talks he he kills me. Are you mixing paint right now? I'm not. But I thought I was getting feedback from like there's a noise <laughs> that's like similar to like the same motion of what I'm using this clay bar on. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like like is that picking that up? I'm like, that's that's really weird. But this dude, this dude got on there, and there was a there was a video where some guy had taken a cow head and burned it and like boiled it or something like that. And this guy made a comment on it, and that that somebody must have complained about that video. Took it down. They took it down. He did. He thought that he so he put it back up, and he got in trouble for putting it back up because he didn't realize that they had taken it down. He made another comment on it. He made another comment on his thing, but but no, if you get a chance, man, you got to see this dude. I can't remember his. I got to look his name up, but it's just yeah, he is hilarious. He 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 just go. He goes full country talking about cooking. It's it is so funny. Like he'll go <laughs> like well, there was this one where they were. There's the same one I posted on where the guy lady was putting boiled eggs in her spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he goes he goes no 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 ma'am. He says no. Here's here's how he talks. He goes he goes no yeah you're looking for an early dismissal, aren't you? <laughs> 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 there, uh, I, mean, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you can't mess him. Uh, he's funny. God, I can't remember his name. Oh, I, uh, yeah, man. I for a while there, like, every there was some one of the reasons why I stopped doing lives. There was a lot of weird stuff going on, right? For a while, and I'm like, I can't, I mean, I can't afford to have my account get banned for something, you know ridiculous because right. somebody's got an issue, a personal issue with someone, like, I don't get it. I'm like, I get along with everybody. Like, I don't have a mm-hmm. beef with anybody. But I, in fact, like, I, this summer, traveled the country and went to other shops. I mean, so, you know, hold on. Oh, I don't want to get Sorry. Okay. Are you talking about man, we're business, man. Just, 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 going, just going through life, man. There's no time or no need for that foolishness. I'm not with it. Yeah, no, no, no. And it's like, I was just talking to uh, uh, Ray Evans. You guys know the Evans down there in uh, Florida? Ray and Paige Evans, they were uh, older Spry guys. Um, you know, mm-hmm. he had made a comment about um, today about ceramic coating companies. Because, you know, when you sign up to be a certified whatever with a PPF or whatever the company is, you know, they do have a social media kind of um, policy that says there's only certain things you can talk about. Like when I was up in Chicago... Uh, at a shop, I was kind of guest appearing up there working on a project. We were doing some expel PPF, and Jay was like, "Look, man, it's like we've got to be very careful. These are the only things that we can, you know, we can say, and and you know, they can pull your contract." But his big thing was, is there's all these people that are claiming to be certified, they're representing these companies, but they're very negative people. You know what I'm saying? They're, yeah. You know, versus getting to know other people and learning from them. They're, you know, all they want to do is put people down, and that is not cool. I hate that. No, not at all. Well, it's an arrogance. Must... Yeah, ahead, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's called ar- It's an arrogance of, you know, thinking that, you know, that you're doing things be- better, different, you know, or, or whatever than someone else. And, you know, I've, I've always been one to, to, to try to shy away from that and, and not get into the negative thing. Even in my area, you know, a lot of detailers in my area. I've even had a couple of detailers come at me and like, dude, dude, you can't, you can't just start giving work to people. 
you know, they, they, they basically came in and tried to put their hand around my shoulder and say, Hey man, you're not doing it right. And I mean, what do you mean? And they, you know, because they're basically saying that I shouldn't be, you know, helping other deal detailers, other guys, you know, cause they have this idea that, it, because, well, and you know what I'm talking about. You have these people that have this, have this, you know, this thing where there's, there's a competition. I know. Be, you know, Dude, it, I'm like I know. more than enough cars and more than enough details around to service these cars. There's no need for it. No. And right. if you surround yourself with nothing but positive people and you only portray those same positive things and images when you're online, yeah. it should never come back around to you. You have those, you know, one or two idiots who say what they want to say, but you just kind of leave them alone. They'll they'll fold in their own time. You know, and I, I'm the I'm a kind of guy, Matt knows I wish everybody success, man, because it's more than enough money, more than enough jobs to go around doing this. It is. There is. I'm well, the my dad. I always, need everybody to be successful. My dad always yep. taught me the business. You know, he says he says he says you, there are bridges you don't cross, but never burn them down. Correct. Nope. And you, you never know when you're going to need these people. And you know, you could be in a situation, you know, where you know. And I said, I said, work. I have. I've had people call me up. You know, I'm not a uh, a mobile detailer that is going to go after mobile volume. In other words, you know, and there's nothing Neither wrong with doing yeah. that. That's just not my. That's not my business model. I subbed it out to a guy actually. Yeah, so that that's exactly where I was. Having. I have guys that I send work. To. Um, you know, if somebody calls me up and says they need an eighty dollar detail. I'm not, I'm not above doing it. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't do that. But I'm sitting here with too much work here, and my theory on this one is you're still helping the customer out. The idea is the customer's calling you, asking you to solve a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if you physically don't do it, still do your best to solve the customer's problem. Oh and yeah. So no, so I I totally agree. Yeah. And that's and that's yeah. you, you. Even if you didn't help them, you you refer them to an expert that can solve their problem. At the Absolutely. Price point you wanted to. Absolutely. That's the point of service. Yeah. So you're you're at a point of service at that point, and I've had people tell me, "Well, you didn't get the work." Actually, I did. I I, I did get the work because right. you know, the next time they look for something more along the lines of touch up or or more along the lines because everything they know they're going to. Not to do that kind of stuff, and that's not what they're looking for. That is correct. But the next time they bump something or 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 you know, something, and they go to that detail, or the detailer goes, "I don't do that kind of thing." Remember that guy, or he's going to refer the guy back to me. I've had it happen, so it's not a, you know. No, I, I agree. It yeah. should be I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Oh yeah. All right, we got to get back to the actual work part of our video, just momentarily. <laughs> here, okay. <laughs> so. What we were doing here is kind of just a live demonstration as if just, you know, the standard, you know, man or woman was wanting to do this at home because I'm at my house, I'm at the shop. I have virtually nothing. Are you the bad? Bare, the bare minimum materials to remove an emblem and put some back on. It. But what right. we were talking about, and Mike, I know you have had this happen to you too. And I don't know if you thought, I showed everybody before I took off the emblems. And normally you would make a template out of tape that way, you know, and I mark stuff with a, you know, permanent marker on the tape that way I've got everything lined up, you know. The problem is, is like most people, they order these cheap little things off of Amazon. Well, guess what? This little thing off of Amazon is about spaced about a quarter of an inch narrower than the original on all the things. So guess what? It doesn't match up. Right. So if anybody's saying, well, why are you going to just stick it on there? Because it doesn't match up to the original. So we're just going to go in here and put it on an aesthetically pleasing area. Um, so we got the area cleaned off. IPA clean it. Uh, do you guys use IPA or what do you like to use for panel wipe? Sure do. I use IPA and I use 3D panel wipe. Okay, Okay. so quick question. I have this Megu the, um, Meguiar's. I have this um, Adam's um, panel wipe I got too for the body and for the, um, the trim. It just came so, in, a, in a box. I ordered a bunch of stuff a while back. I haven't used it yet though question when you make your ipa what percentage do you make your ipa at on, on i use a 90 yeah it's 90. No, 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 no no i'm not talking about the percentage of alcohol i'm talking the ratio 50 50 oh, 50 50, 50, 50. 50. Yeah. so yeah, like you took you told me that big fella <laughs> so, well here's something i've actually done lately when it's a little bit uh like for instance here i'm actually using this because i'm trying to get all that crap off i'm using it like 70 30 but I actually, Mike probably knows, you know what soul, body, body and wax, you know the general like body shop, oh. wax and tar remover stuff that yeah. they sell? Yeah. I actually mix that like five to one and I use that as my IPA. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let me tell you, it's amazing. Yeah. It's good stuff. There's well, nothing left on that paint. I promise you, the paint is clean. Yeah, the difference with the Preps Hall has is going. It actually has the um, the a, a very very a very small percentage of a degreaser in it. Yes. So you're going. So one of the reasons, you know, this is one. I, I have had guys ask me, why do you cut your IPA and not use it straight? The reason why you don't is because if you use IPA straight, it is going to evaporate and replace the dirt back on the panel faster than right. too fast. Off. Correct. You give yeah. by putting the water in there, you are cutting. You're cutting down that that reaction time to allow you to be able right. to panel. You're, you're giving yourself work time. Exactly. And that's, just it. and that's, you know, the same principle really goes down to ceramic coatings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ceramic coating, you know, effectively the clear coat and SiO2 has a carrier solvent in it that keeps it liquid. Right. I want right. you to put on the panel and then evaporates. The yeah. biggest thing between flash times is the amount of solvent that's in that. Um, the carrier. That's in the carrier. Yeah. yeah so anyway, so. Effectively, this thing is a 13 and three quarters. Yeah, Refresh My Ride actually came up with a very, very good uh, thing, too. Ethyl alcohol placed on the panel long enough can well the clear. Um, Absolutely. Exactly. And what, exactly what happens when you see ghosts from emblems. The ghost that you see from the emblem is where the adhesive, <laughs> all the adhesive, has gone into the clear and swelled the clear. That's exactly mm. what what did we talk about earlier in this in this video? I said, okay, a few warnings with this. Because our friend here, see how clean that panel is like this tape only one. What's up, buddy? Our uh, our pan, our our friend Big H Big here in the car, and he was removing a pin stripe. And Mike knows exactly where I'm going with this. Right. Yeah. What happens when you remove too. old an old pin stripe off of old paint? What happens underneath there? It swells. Correct. And it's, so you think, oh, it's no problem. I can just polish it out. No, you cannot. Nope. It's taller. And uh, the, the clear coat's bigger in that spot. Yes, it um, is. Now, mm -hmm. I have – now, on the old clears, if you have enough clear, that's a huge, huge, huge if. if yeah. You th technically may be able to, and you've got a very, very small chance of it. But today's clears, absolutely, you do not clear – you probably don't pass anything under 2010. That's exactly what I said. You I probably like... get away with it, but anything mm -hmm. over about 2010, 2012. And the reason being is because the VOC laws drastically changed in 2010. Yep. They then mm. changed again in 2015 and then again in 2018. Um, the VOC laws, the amount of volatile organic compounds that the manufacturers are allowed to put in the clear code. Every time they take those VOCs out of the clear, the clear becomes more and more susceptible to solvent. Correct. So they had to re-engineer the strength back into the clear coats, and they do that through hardness. Right. Which is why today's – and they also do that through and, – and, but when you get that – when and the reason why the pit clears are so thin, and this is what the manufacturers – people don't understand. The manufacturers would want to put twice the clear that they do. They can't. Because, because when you put clear hardness into clear coat and make it as hard, that hard, you have to put it on thin or it will crack. Correct. Mm. Honda Not like lacquer. Out. Yeah, Honda figured this out. If you know about the, the crow's feet that happen on Honda paint, a lot of cars do this, but Honda's famous for it. You see yeah, the yeah. cracks in the crow's feet in the clear coat. You want to see one? I have yeah, one. You got one? So mm. that comes from the clear coat being mm. too thick for its movement. In other words, basically, the clear coat is too thick, and it, 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 so it, it actually shrinks yep. when it splits, and it splits, and it splits, and it, it splits into triangles. So you'll, you'll get these little lines, and usually, and that's, it's, it's yeah. breaking up, basically. We're, we're going we're gonna to get to see this, kids. Stand by. <laughs> because my son, guess what kind of car my other son has? Please excuse the dirty garage. Honda? It's a Honda. Yeah, 2008. Honda I, Accord. I talk black. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> the paint's terrible. That's why not anything's done. Uh, let me get an air. Oh, here we go. Yeah. There you go. Yep. See it? So what's happening there is the paint, the clear coat has actually shrunk. Correct. That's all this. Yep. That's what that is. Crow's feet. That's like a prime example right there. Yep. 
and so yeah, so basically, for lack of a better term, the clear coat. Correct. Um, so, and that's you know, because he's always asked me, well, how would you polish my car? And I go, John, the problem is this has got clear coat failure. Right. You know, it's all the crow's feet, but that's <laughs> exact. So, if anybody wants to know what crow's feet is and what causes it, this is crow's feet because this is. I know that I know. I just did a bad no no here, but the the paints failed. That is cracked from underneath. You cannot sand that out. Nope. Don, if, would Don Clear take care of it though? Yeah. Well, if you try to, if, if you try compound it, you'll make it worse because you're going to basically Correct. try the compound. You're going to rub it out. Right. So right. this has to be taken down with 600 and resprayed. New primer, color, clear. Yeah, it's got to be completely stripped. In most cases, if you took that to a body shop, they would just pop the hood off and put a new hood on it, paint it. Well, but he, yeah, he's got you know, but you know, this is the yeah, stuff like that. this stuff. Yeah, I mean, but here's the deal. My kid bought this car. God, he bought the car when he turned 16. I'm putting the camera back around. Uh, in 2016, or when he turned 16, so almost three years ago, we paid 1800 bucks for that thing. Put maybe 600 bucks in the car. Yeah. 300,000 miles going strong. Yep. So when they, when they make a car, they make a car, man. <laughs> They're good for that. So, so what they I make did, the hell, they make some cars. So what I did on this was, since these do not even remotely closely fact up, match up anywhere to the factory, I just said, okay, what would look aesthetically pleasing? The, the, the original one was right in this general area. I just measured two inches off the side. This is just a personal preference. This is you could do whatever you wanted to, but I just measured two inches off from the end of the bit, the tailgate. Basically, just to keep myself even here, even along the bottom of the tailgate. And I marked a spot where um, was the edge where I thought this would be. Put the tape there, and then we're just going to put it on. I mean, that's that's all we're doing, unfortunately. Because, again, these do not match up to the factory spacing on the factory car. I showed it earlier in the thing. So um, that's what we're doing. That's what well, we're doing. funny people don't understand that there's – with aftermarket – there's 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 all there's, there's authorized aftermarket know. and there's and unauthorized aftermarket. aftermarket. <laughs> so now so the, the the deal the deal with aftermarket is the manufacturers are required to make a product by law for 10 years after it's manufactured after that 10 years the basically the patent for lack of a better term terminates which basically means that mm -hmm. the aftermarket mm -hmm. is wide open for that product. In order to stop up. from being sued, those manufacturers that make the products will make them slightly different. Right. right. On purpose. That's the issue. So, they, so, so what happens is that they're basically protecting themselves. If Bill Morado, they, they could legally argue that it's not the same product. Yeah, we uh, so this week we're finishing up the restoration that's taken almost a year and a half on a uh, 1969 Mustang Mach 1. And he ordered this last minute, this decal kit. And we're like, please, no, because we knew it was going to be an issue. And, you know, the guy's paying hourly labor rate for us to destroy the decals. And we told him we're not going to work. Uh, because we've had people in the past try to do this, and it's like, had you just ordered the decal kit we told you in the first place, you'd have not only saved yourself probably six hundred bucks in labor, but also maybe three or four hundred bucks in the decal because we had we had to buy them over and over because we showed them what the issue was. The issue was that on the Mustangs from that first generation Mustang at the rear tail light. It is a sloped down tail light. Right. Yeah. The problem is, is the way they want you to align that rear graphic to the one that goes across the door, they say follow the angle of the pin. Right. So the way we ultimately solved it was is we actually we told the customer what the situation was. Like, I want these graphics. Fine. So we had to remove the taillight, file down a portion of the opening in the body to level out the rear taillight in order to flush the mount this graphic that lines up with the door. Right. And people want to know why restoration is so expensive. Right. And again, like, you know, and, and so, you know, you'll see. So there are authorized um, aftermarket and most companies after the, you know, probably yeah, a lot of outcome are. Uh, so they, they have their what they call their stock. So when when a, when a manufacturer builds, you know, let's just throw a number up, 100,000 cars. 
every one of those cars, they're going to build a certain percentage of, of, of OEM parts to replace the parts they're going to get it, get their, get damaged. Once that old stock is to a point where it's exhausted and they're within the 10 years, they have to run another run and they have to continue to do that for a period of 10 years legally. Now yep. what, they'll, what they'll do is if they don't want to continue to pay the vendor that makes parts, because most of these parts are not being made by, they opt to have authorized companies make copies and they basically, they still have their run, but they have other companies that are authorized to make the, to make the runs. It's, it's complicated, but it's, uh, and then there's companies that, you know, a lot of the, the chat, the uh, Japanese, the Taiwan stuff, um, all of that stuff is technically unauthorized. So the difference is the, it is almost guaranteed that the unauthorized is going to be slightly different. Oh yeah, Absolutely. And they are always. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sanders, I saw the boomer comment. We have a nice young man. Speaking of being, by the way, you know, again, becoming friends with other people that are detailers in your area. You take Mr. Russell Sanders, who calls us all boomers, and he's right. He's you know, right. I'm 50. Another, I'm 50. Right. right. <laughs> but, you know, another great detailer in our area. And, you know, you work together. You, you, you become friends. You got it. You know, like, I was at my house here. I was it for the most part. If I would have gotten really sick, I could have had people that have come here to cut my business going. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yep. ugh. All right. We're going to keep moving around here. Just like oh. I love Leo from Lit Auto Spa helping out uh, Primal. Correct. Yeah. And it's, you know, that that right there is just, I mean, you know, that that is what a community does for each other. That is, no, that is correct. 100%. So, I mean, 100%. It, well, we're moving you guys. Stand by here so we can get to the next thing that we're doing here. So. We'll get you flipped around. <clears throat> you know, I hate when they change things around. So here's the next thing that we're going to move. Four by four is going. Yeah, well, he's got black ones. These actually were pretty, these were, these were cheap decals, mm -hmm. but these were actually uh, pretty good. Um, I have to admit, these were actually pretty easy. Um here, so we'll uh, we'll get those. But I'm gonna actually now that I think about this, I need to flip you guys back around. I don't know why I did that. Do 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 do. do. There we go. Now you guys can actually see what I'm working on. Okay, yeah. So we'll uh, we're working on those. So these were actually very easy to come on and off. So thank God. So kind of the same thing. Um, decals. Uh, these come on and off. We're just going from the, these factory red ones to black ones. Um, everybody may have a different process. This is just kind of how I do it. I just use tape to go all across the top edge just to get my top line. There. I'll take uh, I actually take a Sharpie. This is an optional thing. It's just something I like to do. And Mike, please jump in because I know you've put on a thousand decals. Right. What I do is on the tape here, I just right above there at the edge of each one of these things, I just mark a little dot. So when I put the new decal back on, I yeah. know I'm lining up where the factory original one was at because where mm -hmm. each point is should be a point of an X or a four. So just a little tip. I mean, like I said, I'm not a super smart guy. I'm one of those measure 67 times, cut 14 times. So. Yeah. Clear coat is good on this. I will highly recommend if you know the paint is single stage, do not put a Sharpie on your single stage paint. Yeah, never, <laughs> never, never, never. No, this is not on the paint. This is on the tape. But if it, oh, yeah. okay. Understand, if yeah. you get a magic marker, a permanent marker on your clear coat, it, yeah. it you know, you, it's going to take some rubbing to get off. It will, oh, actually, yeah. it will actually stay in there. You're going to have to get, ah, you're going to have to get something. To actually, I may have to actually get a little clay there, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to clay that. Never mind. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, I do that call myself like Parker. I'm really sorry. I'm a, I was on a live, and I'll polish it out. I promise. Okay, there we go. Okay. It's but going, it's going. Australia, like, I had to clay bar that off. That was not coming off with IPA or Gooby on. But if you do that on single stage paint, um, it's there. Pretty yeah. much forever. Yeah. 
one of the things that we would do is you the two two things one of them is is you could actually use you use a touch up applicator with a little bit of the guide code if you have that and we'll actually use that to do the marking um there's a, there's a couple of ways to do that you use the pen yeah they actually yeah. make or they make a marking pen for a body pen um which is basically believe it or not is just a it's a, all it is is a dry erase marker with yep. the all with the, uh, the 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 actual uh, paint that's inside of it is uh, thicker. It really is just a dry erase marker. Frozen. Frozen. Yeah, he locked up. Sorry, I'm back. Man, no problem. We're back now. So my battery's going low, so I'm gonna have to do one thing. Just bear. Yeah. There we go. I'm back. Should be back. This might be the back of the details. We're down to like ten percent. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I just do again a piece of tape across the top, just to show where the top piece of the line. I got the tape at the edge of the body here. I'm just kind of in that body line again, drawing a line. I'm actually just going to fold this stuff back um, because this. What I found out earlier is that this actually comes off super easy almost shockingly easy. Um, and this is a pretty quick reinstall. So if you do have a, a, a pickup truck and you've got these on here, you want to switch them out to black, I'll show you what we're going to put on. Yeah. I'm guessing the, the, uh, the decals you got aren't stenciled. No. So we're going from red to black is all we're doing. Okay, gotcha. Nice. Well, what's scary, again, we talk about aftermarket. Look how that's already, look at that. Yep. It, it, this is what I'm talking about, like with cheap aftermarket, to where for maybe t- double the money, you could have gotten more of a thicker sticker that would have been, they don't look like that is my point. But uh, these just come off the heat gun, very simple. Like almost too simple. <laughs> that heat gun works wonders though. Hey, Mike, thanks for the look on that, Um, helping me with that, what you call that, pinstripe, man. Yeah, Between man, you it, and Matt, I got cool. it off. Yeah, man. Great. That's awesome. The, uh, yeah, I have I have the the corded one. I also have the worksite uh, 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 battery-powered one that works really well, too, for, for quick. Yeah. You know, they, the worksite makes one. Uh, I think so, too, but it's a battery. And, uh, it'll be about 30 to 45. And so I'll, I'll pull that out for something small uh, so that I don't Pull a, you know, I don't have to run a cord, or whatever. Um, but past a certain point, uh, you do need to, ha- you know, because the the I think the battery powered ones are only good for about a thousand, probably a thousand degrees. And when somebody goes oh, a thousand degrees, they don't realize that it's a thousand degrees at the heating core. By the time it makes it out, it's not. <laughs> right. Oh, you talking about the battery powered uh, heat guns? Yeah, the yeah. worst. I think Worksite makes one. That's the one I have is Worksite. Um, it works really well for really small stuff. If I'm taking like one emblem off, correct. Taking you know, yeah. or or I'm replacing, you know, somebody somebody has asked me to replace, you know, the, or or I use the badging. Uh, I get a lot of requests. To do that. Um, a lot of people in my area are so afraid of scratching their cars that they they bring. I I get I do a lot of debadging. Yeah, you should be able to just pull that sucker right off. Yeah, it's probably about uh, sixty degrees in my garage, so it's a little cool. Yeah, I mean the idea is you need to get it just warm enough to 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 reactivate the uh, solvent <laughs> and the uh, adhesive, and not get it so hot that the the vinyl melts. Correct. And it just, I mean, it does. It just, I mean, that's sad that that comes off that easy. But it's just a vinyl. Sticker. So what happened too today is because the clear coats are the way they are, the manufacturers of the decals are using solvents. They're right. using less solvent in their adhesives so that you don't run into a problem with damaging the clear yeah, coat. It makes it easier Correct. Um, <coughs> God, I watched a video last night on YouTube, Row R O Cars. Right. If you've guys seen them, they have some great just – their cinematography is amazing, right? Um, and they really show off these cars. And they were showing off a 2022 Aston Martin Vantage Super Legera white. Oh my god! And when they rolled around to the back of this car, and I've I've done 
Aston Martins before, and I know that their paint is generally an issue. Right. Lots of sanding marks, very thin nibs. I mean, there's there's challenges, okay? Yeah. You figure they put a heavier paint on The them. amount of orange peel in this Aston Martin that they had on this video, like, literally, like, I, I, I'm surprised Aston Martin even would have released it as a press vehicle. It's that bad. Like, every comment, you know, is just... Uh, did anybody look at that car before it left the factory? I mean, <laughs> it was embarrassing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People don't realize that press cars are, you know, if press cars, unless they're being used for photography, um, press cars tend to, they, they tend to don't go through the quality controls. Um, because the idea is with the most press cars, people don't realize this uh, when you're dealing with that kind of stuff, uh, and your first run cars. Um, a lot of them are never going to be on the road. They don't have VIN numbers. They're, they're, these cars are going to be for specific purposes uh, only, and you can't not legally buy, purchase, or um, register these vehicles because the VIN numbers uh, that these vehicles do not have VIN numbers. Right. That's why they're crushed at the very end. Yeah. The, one of two things. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. They'll be crushed, or they will be sent to a tech school somewhere. Yes. Um, for for the, the students to learn on. And, you know, because when I was in tech school, and because you know, I did automotive mechanics in tech school, we had a whole series of Hondas um, that all had zero VIN numbers on them. And they were all the, they were the, uh, this uh, we're talking about early 90s, uh, late 80s. Um, they, all of these vehicles, uh, you know, were had no VIN numbers. They're, they're, these little cars technically didn't exist. <clears throat> Do you see that? Yep. Where I put the markings. So, mm. I put a mark right at the tip of every single thing on the original. Right. And you can see, so that's where this one was. You yeah. know, it was the tip of the original one. Mm -hmm. And then as you go down, you can see how far off. So, again, that, that just goes back to the cheap stuff of why not everything always works out like you think it's going to when they do this. And I think it's what happens to a lot of consumers. They buy this stuff. They're making an assumption that it's the exact same thing that the factory put on it. And the problem is, it's it's, it's not. One of the it's things we knew on that, I had no damn idea. Final also. There's a roller that actually rolls it off, and that roller can stretch that vinyl. Yeah. Um, and you, you'll get a you'll get you'll get it where uh, it'll basically match, just like you had. Stretch well, it's, I mean, it's it's just like PPF. I mean, when you're putting PPF on, I remember the first time I did it, Jay's like, don't stretch it. Trust me, it will eventually glide. Right. He's like, if you stretch literally a corner, he's like, a quarter of an inch, the whole piece could be off. Yeah. Absolutely. You're making the hole bigger. <laughs> Correct. That's exactly what's happening. You're making the hole bigger. That's so... But the second eye, nobody would ever notice that. So, <laughs> yeah, no, and, and it's not. It's just, it's one of those things, though. If this is the first time somebody's ever done this, they're going to think, well, what did I do wrong? And they just may send it, you know, it's like, you know, effectively, they're almost all just like this. Yeah. And what uh, I, Matt, what else are you going to do to the truck? You going to give uh, it a ceramic? Yeah. So we're going to, uh, we're just going to ceramic the thing. Um, if I had everything here, I just, I'm so backed up that I literally can't get the thing in. I told myself I would have loved to uh, polish this car after I debadge everything and then put everything back on. But, you know, we'll just treat it like anything else. So, yeah, I'll, I'm going to polish the car out. I'll one-step it, just, you know, probably a yellow wool and Sonex, and then we'll just coat the thing um, here very shortly. He's getting some wheels done, so until – everything's kind of sorted on this. I don't want to polish the car. I mean, that's just, you know, that's throwing, that's just wasting a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to get all mucked up. There's, there's an axe detailer in there. The car is going to get all mucked up anyway. So let's get everything done that we're going to do. And then we'll, uh, we'll get her taken care of. Sorry, sorry about that. Park. By the Real way, quick, I <laughs> want to say, uh, give my man, um, Brian, um, Brandon, Auto Lux, a big shout out, man. Just had his first kid. Nice. Uh oh, there nice. you go. Yes, sir. I don't know if you guys so can congrats. see that. Um, Cannonball Garage and the Cannonball Plate. Um, um, 
So I did cars. Do you guys know Cannonball Garage? Mm -mm. No, not, I'm not familiar, familiar with it. Are you familiar with mm -mm. Cannonball, the actual race? Yes, very yes. much. Okay. All right, yes. so Arnie Arnie Toman, Torman, he uh, is the owner of Cannonball Garage and the world record holder uh, for Cannonball. He did it with um, the last one. He did it with I forgot one of the guy's name, but the other guy he did. Um, it's uh, God. What is his name? He's on TikTok. Uh, he's on VinWiki. He calls himself the Mexican Stig Switch Cars guy. Uh, but anyway, so when the two cars, the Audi that actually is the world record holder and then the Mercedes Benz, when it was repaired, they're going on a tour. So we did, uh, Jay and myself at Driven Week Detailing in Chicago did those cars, uh, for him. So it was a really cool experience. Plus we did a McLaren, a P1, and a few other things. So I got to grab some. Give me one second. Refresh that dog. <clears throat> All right. We've got a fella in here asking about white dog hair on a black. So yeah, white, white dog, dog hair on a black interior carpet. Um, it's on the carpet. Uh, but I analog. Yeah, analog. Well, I use a uh, pumice stone, and I actually have a tool for for the rougher carpet. I have a, a metal tool that's uh, used. So there's multiple ways to handle that. We're talking about uh, Scott brother here is talking about uh, white dog hair on a black interior. Yeah. And so it, by the uh, way, we're probably going to be on here for another minute because my phone's about ready to die. Yeah. So if you guys got oh, questions, man. let's uh, we'll get charge them in it here. up. Charge it up, man. Uh, I, I just... try to try to run a quick charge to it. Yeah, the lily brush or the analog. Brush. Stand by. All right. Stand by. We'll get the people what they <laughs> Yeah, the analog, oh, the analog, oh, and the lily oh, brush oh. is pretty good. Yeah. You could even try a what you call it, man, a, a regular uh, nitrite glove. To see right. if that works, if you don't have the, that those things at, at your disposal, just yeah, rub the, it over and see if it I, picks it up. Yeah, one of the things, the tricks that I have, I actually have a round. It's actually a pumice stone, but um, it's it's from a beauty supply as opposed to the regular pumice stones. So it has a, it, it it's it, I use it for more delicate carpet, and the, mm -hmm. the round edge allows me to get into the into the uh, and, and into the round part of the floor pan. Um, it's actually the one that I have, I think I got from Ultra Beauty, but it, it's of course on one side and fine on the other, allowing you to control that, uh, nice. quite a bit. Yeah. The nitro glove. Yeah. The, believe it or not, a nitro glove works really well. One of the tricks to doing it, uh, to helping out is to take your O and R take a little bit of O and R and put mm -hmm. it in your bottle and spray a very, very slight mist onto the carpet. It kill, it helps to kill the, uh, the, uh, static static. Yeah. So one of the, smart. One of the things when you're dealing with dog hair is if you rub on that carpet enough and create static, it's not that mm -hmm. the dog hair is stuck to the carpet. It's the static is holding it from being able to move it. So right. a lot of times what guys will do, you can do this with an APC, uh, any type of, uh, of, of surfacant uh, like an O&R uh, or any type of cleaner uh, will break that static. So and when I say mist, I'm talking about a very, very fine mist, just enough over the surface that you're not wetting the uh, product or wetting the, right. uh, the surface. In a, in a mister. Yeah, you're, yeah. So you just mist the surface like that. You can mm -hmm. then at that point use the nitro glove. Uh, the only, like I said, the nitro glove what works really, really good unless you're in a situation where static is being created and then you can fall, yeah, charge up a wool blanket up in the dryer and stick it. I never heard of that refresh, but you're a man of many means, bro. I'm gonna give that a shot too. Yeah. Refresh is a genius at that type of stuff, man. But any type of of any type of uh, surfacant like uh, that, if you mist it onto the uh, onto the carpet really lightly, you can kill that static, and it makes it a lot easier to remove the car yeah. dog hair. Static. Can we? Can All right, we, we got talk about it. how important O and R and absolute these 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 different type of chemicals are, man. It's so you can use it for so many different things. It's crazy. I yeah, know, you have no idea how much I how how much I use uh, uh, O and R at, at, at you know, Allen for a lot of things. Um, in a lot of cases too, I do a lot of touch up where I'm not actually detailing the vehicle to mm -hmm. do a quick wipe down. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. By the way, I'm gonna mute myself real quick just yeah. because that's gonna be loud. Yeah. <sighs> so give me one moment here. You got it. I mean, you keep talking. I'm just trying yeah. to figure out how to mute. What's what's the D one fifteen refresh? I, I uh I don't know what the I don't know the numbers on the on the Meguiar's. What's the product name? 
I don't know, but I think O&R has that, what you call it, though. It has some competition because uh, let me tell you something. That, that PNS, uh, Absolute, yeah. serious business. I'm hearing some good stuff. I'm actually going to grab some. The only reason why I haven't serious grabbed business. I have so much O&R. It's like I don't want to buy anything that, you know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but but I, you can actually, I, I get on the auto, uh, auto, autotality page, pay like a 50 a year, and you can get a, a, a quart of the Absolute for like 11 or 12 bucks on there. Um and that the, makes so much. Yeah, I don't know that I can Just get you. I don't know some, that I can get you uh, some. Dis- my, how do I mute myself? Uh, you go to the, where it says mic at the bottom. Hit mic and tap the mic. Stand by. See, mine doesn't say mic in, in the main one. I know on like your That's square, it's mine at the very bottom. See, y'all were laughing at me for not having an iPhone last week. <laughs> 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 At the very bottom, mine says camera, mic, uh, multi uh, rows, and it shows. Yeah, it's yeah. different though when you're, you're the host. That's why. Apple. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Apple. It is. It is. It, yeah, when you're the. I wonder you hear me? It's listed differently. You, you hear, hear me, me now, but we get it. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Gonna be loud for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're talking about the waterless. Yeah. I have. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I haven't tried the McGuire's waterless. I've tried the um. There's one that I've used. It's blue. Uh, that's eye wash, and I cannot remember the name of it. It's like wax and something. Um, it's the one that I that I used for years. It's wax and shine or something like that. Is it good? Um, it works well, but it's designed more as a dry wash than it is. Mm-hmm. A, it's hard to you know. It's designed to like basically spray direct on the panel. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's a direct spray. Um, I, I I use I use it. Uh, used to use it years ago because I actually did work at a water company that actually made water. And I could not. There's a lot of things I can't, you can't do uh, there. And this was before all the rentless washes. So they could do um, it, it. So they made a, a spray on wash. I can't have the runoff because there's a there's a natural spring underneath, so you can't mm-hmm. use water on any vehicles uh at this place wow there's like a major fireworks show going off outside my house <laughs> i hear it do you hear it, <laughs> I hear it. yeah i heard it <laughs> fireworks are strictly forbidden in our area and you will go you will get in major trouble like the police jump on our people all the time not in good old jefferson county missouri buddy <laughs> I'm in, legal. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. You said that's called living in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshes on a roll. <laughs> well, look, now there are parts of St. Louis where when you hear that, it's not fireworks, I promise you. Correct. The it loo. Is not, it is not fireworks. What's up, oh, man, cut it out. You know you live you know you live down the block from Nelly. <laughs> What's that? You know you live down the block from Nelly. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah you, so you're right uh yeah when you're dealing with uh o and r yeah i mean i use it i i use it as a clay lube i mean i use it i use it a lot of you know Listen, again man i'm i'm about to add some tomato sauce to o and r make a damn uh spaghetti sauce out of it that's how crazy it is <laughs> no yeah, I mean, is the goods honestly, man for, Eat for spaghetti and take watch, a shot of it <laughs> i mean you, you should be using it for just about everything yeah yeah um, you know, you've got O and R, you've got O and R McKee thirty seven, and you've got Absolute Rinseless Wash, and I've used all three, and I'm now exclusively Absolute. And that's not yeah. like I'm not sponsored by P and S. It's just it's that good. Yeah. So the Absolute, you say yeah, better than O I think it is. Yeah. It's um, just it's just it's more it's just it, it's very thick. Right. It looks. Um, have you seen it yet? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen uh, I've seen a couple of guys using it. It's 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 uh, it almost looks like a very thin compound. Yeah, yeah, yeah like just car correcting compound. Yep. Um, Listen, man, two capfuls of that stuff, like you said, in four um, four four gallons of that um distilled water. water. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I could I could make so many bottles of that stuff, and I'm still not even at at half the damn bottle yet. I know. It's beautiful. Well, that's the thing. O and R, I use it so much, but I've only used like half a gallon. <laughs> right, you just keep that looking at damn thing. Like, yeah, so. yeah. No, it's it's really good. I use it. You know where I use it a lot is in the steamer. In the steamer, it works really well. 
Right. Um, oh, yeah? For an interior, because it has that scent, it leaves a small scent in. Um, in, the, in the, you know, when you're, when you're aerosolizing it through the steam or vaporizing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've noticed, too, when you're using it, so, like, you know, we have a lot of cars in our collection that just don't need to be washed. I'll actually throw out the steamer and wash cars with, ste- with a steamer in absolute. Yeah. I've seen F-Squizza do that. Yeah, yeah. it works well. I use a lot of wash because I have a guy that's a, he, he uh, basically, uh, he does restorations of uh, Mustangs. So he does mm-hmm. a lot of Mustang restoration. So what he does is he tears the cars down, he bags everything, sends the body off, and then brings the car back, does the, puts it all back together for the customer. And he calls me and I do the final. I go through the car at the very end. And this vehicle is clean. The only thing I'm getting rid of are all the fingerprints and all the all the all the stuff from the from the from the installation. And mm-hmm. this vehicle doesn't require being washed. There, there's the and, and and I'm not a fan of putting water on a car if I don't have to. So right. uh, I do a lot of rinseless wash. Uh, and what's funny is I've done it for years, and then all the you know it's become a big thing. And a lot of it now, the reason you know, we know it's become a big thing because there are areas that uh, it is now illegal to wash your car. Um, right. So you know, with, with water. So we're getting to a point where we have we have no choice in a lot of places, which is pushing the technology. Um, one of the things that we used to do years ago on cars that we didn't want to get wet. Uh, for for specific purposes, is where you would use baby shampoo, um, yeah. and you know for years I used baby shampoo for lubrication for wet sanding. I still do that. We still uh, do in PPF. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you know, Yeah, well, the big thing with baby shampoo is is it has just enough of the lubricant in there, but it doesn't have all of the other conditioners and all the other right. stuff that goes in a regular shampoo. So um, that's why. Uh, by the way, it's why. I use it when I wet sand. Right. I have I've been using it for wet sand for 30 years. Um, but what's funny is, is we used to put it in water to do these. Wa- we, what we, we were doing rentless washes 30 years ago um, for specific cars. And again, we would use baby shampoo in the water and, and actually wash the cars with baby shampoo. And so these products That's now, uh, these, are, these are, it's the same okay. technology, but they're today they're doing, uh, they're, they're using this. They, they, the technology, gotten better uh and a lot of that like pushed oh yeah because, because the because there are areas now where it is becoming stricter and stricter on on the use of water uh i do know that a lot of a lot there are areas that are in certain states where you know you can get huge fun for using more than a gallon of water or three gallons i think it's three uh to, to wash your car hey, call parker and tell about 20 minutes Okay. So hold on, with the uh, the baby shampoo, we're we using that. We're using that as a um, as a as a as a as a as a wash. You just use it straight. You don't dilute it. You just use it by itself. No, you do, you use it exactly. You use it exactly like you would the uh, absolute or the that. You're just using okay. It. So you do have to dilute it. Dilute it. Yeah, yeah. We would what we would do is we would put two capsules in a 32 ounce bottle of water and you shake it up really well. Mm-hmm. And it, it works. It doesn't work as well, but it still will do it. Uh, the 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 rinseless washes are much better uh, at it. Okay. But I'm just saying, prior to these rinseless washes and all that stuff, that's how we would do these kind of things. Because I, uh, from for many years, you know, I, I do a lot of car detailing, not really detailing touch ups on car lots, where I mm-hmm. have to be able to wipe the cars down, and, and and they're not getting detailed. They have to be. I have to be able to wipe them down to to fix the scratches on the on on the lots and so mm-hmm. the only way and, and you can't you know a, using a regular spray detailer is not strong enough so what we do is we would put baby shampoo in the water and, and that or a very very small amount of car soap so you would take your car soap and put like a, a half a capful in the water and you would use just enough surfacant you're basically doing the same thing the rinseless washes engineered it to work much better much faster and work much. So, Mike, better. let me ask you this: Can I yeah. use um, the rinseless wash, like O and R Absolute, as my liquid for um, headlamp restoration? There's no reason for it. You can't. Um, okay. There's no reason you can't. So basically, what happens? So basically, all O and R and all of these—they're basically water softeners. Mm-hmm. For lack of a better term, they are very, very high-tech water softeners. So what they're doing is they're making the—they're making the surfacants. So what they're doing is—is is they're actually taking. They're, 
making the they're making the water uh softer and what that does is that groups the dirt up the the dirt actually surfaces so a surfacant basically means you spray it on the surface the dirt lifts up and floats for lack of a better term to the surface and then you wipe it off so it's lifting the dirt off the surface um so that's how that's how it kind of functions um and then you there's guys on youtube and some guys that have done tests where they've shown how that functions uh and how that works. Well, hey, I, think, I think it's a lot smaller, isn't it? Yikes. It's a lot. It's a lot smaller. Yeah. I just want to show you, so you don't think that these were put on in, incorrectly. Right. They're, <laughs> they're, <laughs> correct. Okay. I just want you to know. Say hi to TikTok Live. <laughs> What's up, buddy? All yeah, right. Oh, my camera's off. All right, I can't on. see. Okay. Um, Can so yeah. So when you talk about rinseless washes, yeah, all of them are, you know, all of them are, are uh, basically water softeners. And it just goes about, it, it, it's, it's about, you know, and when you're dealing with chemicals, like, you know, you, you know, compounds and all that stuff, almost all of the chemicals are the, are, are very similar. The chemicals are the same. What, what, what is going on is the chemists have figured out the threshold or the, 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 the perfect amount of each of the chemicals to do what you're trying to do. So, yep. okay. you know, it, it has to do with, you know, it, uh, it, you know, some compounds powder because they have a lot more of a, you know, of, of the aggression of the aggressive part of it. Some of, I, them, some of them don't powder as much you stop it from powdering, which means that. It doesn't cut. So, again, it just comes down to, uh, you know, to, to, to the, the, the chemistry uh, to, to make it do what it does. So, um, you know, uh, using the, the, you know, these rental swashes are much more effective of, uh, you know, as far as lifting dirt as a, you know, as using shampoo, but it, that's the, uh, that's the debt that, that, like I said, we, we've, we did it long before <laughs> we just did it in a different way. And most of it was, was, was using it as a wet stand and then realizing that it also cleaned the car. And it's like, well, then again, I'll just use this to clean the car with. It. And again, not ideal. Um, I, I still to this day, the rinseless wash is over the top of, uh, using baby shampoo. I would not use baby shampoo to wash a car now with these things out there. It is not a, as effective. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. But it, works. Works. it works in a pinch. <laughs> I'll take here's uh here's something interesting. Mike, have you ever uh wiped a single stage very thin paint car down with gasoline to thin it down? No. And take stains out? I have used acetone to do that. Okay, but I'm saying some type yeah. of petroleum type of solvent, heavy yeah. solvent. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. We, yeah I you almost, you almost do in some cases. So I had a car this week, uh, last week, that that's what I did. The car had point three four mils of paint, right? It's a, stained, heavy oxidation. Wiped it down with with gasoline, right? Took a neutralized it with absolute rinseless wash paint. You know, after the fact. Yeah, and then I just took a yellow pad and Uno Pure and just kissed it, and the car looked amazing. They couldn't yeah, believe it. Got it out. I'm like, I'm gonna wipe it down with gas, and they're like, "What?" Yeah, I had to and do that. They saw it. They were like, a... "That really works." I go, See, "Yeah, it does." I had a camera. A lot of us, a lot of us who have been in the game for like maybe the last five to ten years, we don't know those old school tricks, man. Right. Well, what ends up happening is the single stage is porous, and so single stage is porous and it soaks up the environment. Correct. And what ends up happening is is you have two options, and because we, we deal with this, I, I still see old school Camrys, old school Corollas, and Highlanders uh, that and and Land Cruisers that have single stage paint. People don't realize up until only a few years ago, Toyota and Nissan and all of them still had single stage paint on their solid colors: the white, the black, the red, the yellow. All were still single stage. And you would see uh, the biggest problem that I've, that I've seen as far as oxidation are the uh, 040 white, uh, that and the pilots, the Honda pilots, Hondas that, that have the single stage white on them. And, 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 uh, and, and it is 100% correct that you're going to get to a point where that, that paint is too thin to be cut it. You have no other option but to, to actually de stain it. And unfortunately, 
the fact that a lot of the staining that's on there is going to be uh, TFR, which is your, your, your road film. Uh, and the only way to break road film is going to be using some type of solvent. And so uh, gasoline, I've never used gasoline, but I have, I have taken uh, a blue towel on a roll and soaked it with acetone and wiped these cars down to pull the stain out of them and done exactly what he was talking about. By the way, I don't, I don't recommend the gasoline thing. It's just, it, it was in a situation where it was an acceptable time to show somebody something. Yeah. Um, but it's just so darn effective is why I use it. Yeah. And again, you know, you, you're, you're almost forced to do it. And you cannot have you got this, this, this uh, Correct. Most, most likely, by the time that vehicle, that vehicle, those vehicles were 2013, 12, 11, 10, 9, and the the sun has thinned them out. They were already thin to begin with, and at some point, somewhere in its life, multiple times, somebody's already had to pull it and polish these up. So you literally have nothing uh, left. So your your only option to make this car look better is to destain it and then seal it. And that's that's one of the things that you know I have done. Uh, you know, I used acetone uh, in that play, in the place of that. Uh, the big trick with acetone is that using it with a blue towel on a roll. What I use it with, and making sure that the acetone stays soaking wet. People don't understand that acetone gets a lot hotter as it dries off. So if you keep it soaking wet, you're going to get you know, and, and then add the further that it goes, the further, the hotter, the, the more it evaporates off, the more caustic it gets. So there's a trick to, to, to doing that is to take and wiping, wiping that panel with that, that rag so wet. Blue towels on a roll work really well because they don't scratch. They get, they're very soft. They're much softer even than, than you know, uh, on the type of other rags. Uh, you can do, the only reason why I don't use, like using microfibers is because you can transfer the color from the microfiber onto that panel. The, the paint, you, and it's staining the paint. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to Jonathan at Dirty to Dreamy, and he he, uh, he was talking about using the uh, high the, the high alkali cleaners um, from uh, Bridgepoint, which are the fire, the ice uh, on, on mats. And he makes a comment that you want to make sure that you're using a white terry cloth when you do that, because if right. you're wrong, uh, uh, microfiber, especially some of the cheaper ones, the alkali in there can release the color in the <laughs> in the uh, microfiber and actually transfer the color onto your carpet. And if it locks, you just ruin that carpet. Yep. These are not what you want to use. This, right. these, these are being treated as disposable towels of the seed. Absolutely. Understand. That's the only reason why I'm using these. Right. Because these scratch the hell out of your paint. Yep. Yeah. But they're disposable this evening. So, that's why so I do keep, you know, for cleaning carpets, I do keep the uh, the white cloth. Uh, I learned that very quickly that you know you, you get if you're using strong enough solvents, if you get the wrong Terry, you know, you use the, get the wrong microfiber, you can break the ink or the dye that's in those in those microfibers. And again, you know, we're getting into you know making sure you know to it's it's what I call preventative. You're preventing a possible problem uh, that has happened. You know, and I have people out there that'll go, you know, I, I've had people go, well, I've never had that happen. I've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah, so have I. But I've also had that one time that it does and it cost me a thousand dollars. It's always the one time. And that's what I tell guys. I go, yeah. you may have get you may get away with something a thousand times. It's on that thousand mm -hmm. one time. And trust me, if you've ever written a check to a customer. Right. It is the most gut punching feeling ever. Yeah. My biggest fear in my business, and I've told, I've told people this before, my biggest fear ever in my business is having to call a customer and say, I was telling them that I screwed their car up. Right. That is my, that's the, that's the, the yeah. like, I, I, I don't, I don't care about anything else. I don't, you know, I can, you know, give me a, give me a car that I'm getting paid 200 bucks on to take three weeks to pick. That doesn't even bother me as much as having to call the customer up and say, Hey, I, I know you brought your car in here, but I burned the paint or I bumped it into a wall or I did something stupid or we're going to have to take this to the body shop because I put a red microfiber on there trying to clean something up and I've stained the car and I have to take it to the body shop. So that's the, yeah, that's the, uh, that's my biggest fear is, is having to call the customer and telling, tell, you know, because not only that, not only if you, 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 you're having to tell the customer that, you are you're losing the, you're going to lose the the revenue from all of the work that you've done up to that point <laughs> on top of having to pay the customer and then, and then when it comes back from wherever then you got to detail the car again 
Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you on, got- on your dime too. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't, you ain't getting it back a second time. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah, so any time that I can prevent a possible problem, um, I you know, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of things out there um, that can be can be a potential problem in the right scenario. Um, you know, and you know, and, and all of us that have been doing this for a long time, I've 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 bumped cars, um, I've I've hit two cars together and had to make that call. Um, those things have happened. If you do this for 30 something years and move thousands and thousands of cars, the, uh, the odds are against you. And, uh, you know, so it's a. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I, I said it before. I said the more cars you touch, it, eventually something is going. It, it sucks. But yeah. it's happened to every one of us and we've all had to do it. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things, you know, uh, over the years, I can determine that, you know, with my in my touch up business on dealership lots. If I if I figure the money the amount of money that I make and I divide it by the amount of cars or, or, or the money that I made and uh, divided by the amount that I charge on average, I've probably been in and moved over two hundred thousand cars. Oh, I'm sure. So that being said, the, the the odds are very very high that at some point something bad is, yeah. which is one of the reasons why I recommend that everybody. Who, no matter what you're doing, you have to have a garage liability policy or some type of right. garage, garage keepers. It is absolutely shop, shop keepers, shop keepers. shopkeepers. Yeah, yeah. I, I do mine through Travelers, but I tell everybody it is absolutely insane not to have that coverage. Um, it, I think the one that I have, I think covers me one million for pro, uh, property and five million uh, for personal damage. If one of your customers decides they're going to come over and go, "Hey, how you doing?" like that, and trips over your, uh, trips over the your your uh, power cord, or trips over your your uh, uh, your power washer cord, and face tanks the side of your house or the side of your shop, uh, that can be a million dollars. insurance time. Yeah. 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 A million dollar payout. So, well, you know the, um, you know, I, I I think we talked about this in the last live. So I have a. My insurance is through Acuity because I have to do some. I do some weird things to sell high end cars. Right. And but one of the things that I did was is I just got an extra umbrella policy that covers my home, my autos, right, and my business. Mm-hmm. That's an extra mm-hmm. two or three million bucks, and it's very inexpensive. But the point is, is that, for instance, uh, three months ago I worked on a two point one five million dollar car. Right. That is a zero fail situation. Right, right. Anything that goes on, you're talking, it's an insurance claim. Yeah. It's an insurance claim. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you know, people don't, I'll, I'll, I'll take it to the nth degree. You talk about window tinting, okay? Right. Window tinting, tinting is relatively simple, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, there was a very high end shop out in LA that had somebody bring a, uh, McLaren sent it to them to do PPF and tent and all kinds of stuff to the car. They didn't like this shop's price. They went to another shop that was a good shop, but was about a third of the price. The shop, when reinstalling the Bauer Watkins speaker pod on the door card to this McLaren Senna, when they were doing the tent, cracked the door card. You want to take a guess how much a door card on a McLaren Senna cost? Twenty grand, hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christmas! <laughs> that does not surprise me. I was low. <laughs> and by the way, they can't find one. They can't get one for like a year. Right. So imagine that, that issue because this guy wanted to save like three thousand bucks. I think it was. That's what happened. Right. Right. I mean, we, we don't think about these things. And I think, you know, in the very beginning, when you're doing what we all did, and that's just, you know, work on a Chevy truck or a Honda Accord or whatever, those things aren't even a consideration for you. And, and to be honest with you, the, the likelihood of anything major happening on those are slim to zero. But as you elevate your career and you start moving up and you start working on expensive stuff, mm-hmm. these are real issues you're going to have to consider and address. Yeah. I, I, I just tore up the uh, center console for what you call it. You have, you saw that um black um Cobalt. 550 AMG I did, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. On my page? Yeah. There, there was some dirt on the center console. It's a tan leather interior. So 
I get my leather brush out, and boy, I get to rubbing. And I rubbed and I rubbed until I took the damn color off the damn uh, off the leather. Yikes. Yep. And I had to come out of pockets for that. Like, yep. you know, it was a friend of mine, but still, business is business. I paid him for him. Like, look, just it's on me, man. I just know next time to be a little more gentle and take, you know, do little dabs and see where the the, the dirt is disappearing well, or not. Let's talk, let's talk about rinseless washing then, because guess what? That car that I rubbed down with gasoline, which is like the most aggressive possible way you could have ever done anything to that car. Right. Was also, by the way, original paint. And the car is 100% original, including the nearly 70-year-old leather on the inside. Guess what that got cleaned with? It took five hours to clean two seats. What would you clean it with? It, absolute rinseless wash in a spray bottle and the softest, softest of soft brushes and just for and you hours. got it off. And not one lick of color came off on a single top. Yeah. But you see, Matt, that's just experience because me thinking, I, I've never, this has never happened to me. I get to that, that leather brush and I just get to clean everything and it just comes up quick. But man, I rubbed a little too much and the, the color, it was tan, it was peanut butter leather. It and it just came up off of it. So we had to get it resprayed. The Alcantara, was different, the Alcantara stuff, the, 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 the backward suede. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Believe I had that in my car, I, too. It on, on Alcantara, O&R, I used yes, it. only. I use O&R oh. straight. I That's it. I, I've taken O&R out of the bottle, put it on there, put it, like literally gone in there and used it uh, straight at first, like basically rubbed it in and then used the water to lift it out. Correct. You know yeah. what's crazy, Mike? PNS doesn't, um, the, the PNS quick interior de detailer doesn't, um, I mean, interior cleaner doesn't really destroy the Alcantara either. But I spray it lightly with a, um, a mister, with a mister yeah. sprayer. Yeah. That but it doesn't destroy it, but that O&R is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. For, for Alcantara, it's straight O&R. So whatever your favorite O&R to rinse this wash is, yeah. that's what I highly recommend. Yeah. Because I do my own Alcantara with um, the uh, PNS stuff. And yeah. it's, it hasn't torn it up yet, but O&R makes me feel safer because it's yeah. such, such a great multi-use tool. Well, the good thing about the is that it does perfectly job. And that's that's where it doesn't tear stuff up. Now, that's the beauty of the expression. And that's why you hear people want to do something really bad. And they go, well, the express clean is going to do that great job. It's, express clean is exactly what it says. It is designed for 85 to 90 percent of Correct. what it's going to do. There is going to be that 10 percent that is too strong, too bad for that product. It's nothing against the product. It's just that the, the application is going to require something stronger. And if you mm -hmm. watch Jessica Tran when she talks about Express, she then says she'll tell you that she'll use the Meguiar's uh, Citrus Plus, um, or you know even some of the guys out there will take the uh, uh, Super Clean and they'll cut it like ten to one or twenty to one and use a degreaser. Um, you know, except uh, the big thing that I, I am not a fan of using uh, alkali salts um, on the interior of the vehicle. I mm -hmm. I. I do not like, I don't use the APCs on the inside of a car. Um, the, you know, uh, the only time you'll ever see me use any type of super clean inside a vehicle is when I know that the material is grease or oil or petroleum based Base. and in that specific spot. Um, right. The alkali salts, uh, so basically the, the way a, a, you know, a high alkali product works is it uses an, alkal it uses an alkaline salt uh, to actually do that. The issue is, is if you use a AP, a AP or something that's high alkali, you have to neutralize it with an acid. You got to cut it with an acid, yeah. You have to, have to neutralize it and make it pH neutral. If you do not Man. do that, you basically turn that product. You turned it. That's why if you've ever used Super Clean on an interior, let it sit for a little while and come back and feel that it's sticky. That's exactly what it's that is. It's denaturing the material. It's right. doing exactly what it was made to do, correct. What it's doing is, is that now every time something dirty hits that surface, it's going to transfer that you're basically yep. somebody, your, your, your feet, hands, whatever, are going to, everything on your hand is going to now transfer onto that panel. Dirt, uh, dirty to Dreamy uh, just, did a, just did a video about that too. Yep. Uh, so he, he's got his chemistry 100% correct on that. It, it, and it works across the board. Now I'm not, you know, I, I, there's guys out there that swear by it. They use super clean on all the time i i trust me it works i i will flat tell you something the, um what did i use i the only time i use super i used to use it as a as a degreaser right for the ex for the exterior of my car like when i want to um 
just get some of the surface dirt off. Right. I put a little bit of that, some O and R, and a little bit of car wash, depending on what I'm using, to do like a first degreasing to get most right. of the dirt off. Yeah. And also, on, on, it's great on tires, but other than that, I, it doesn't touch the interior of any car that I've ever done. And I've done quite right. a few cars. I never, I and never, because goes, I think it's too strong. Yeah, this goes back to the the, the old school body armor. All. And the the issue with armor all is that armor. Oh, you, all, wait, you you mean you mean that you mean the official dashboard cracker? <laughs> no, <laughs> let me explain why it does that. So armor all, the in the early days for their ease of use. So ease of use products. They used an alcohol kicker in their product in order to make it easier for you to use. In other words, it, it dried really fast and it made it easy to use. The issue with having any type of APC or alkali salt or something like that in a plastic, the old school plastics were worse than they are now because now they have, there's a, there's a, there's a clear coat or a, a coating that's put, them on, put on them now that kind of prevents a lot of this until you break that coating. This is where you got to be careful. Inside in these interiors, all of these interiors have a coating very similar to what's on the headlights. So on the headlights, what causes the yellowing and the crusting and all that stuff is there's a UV coating that goes over the top of the headlights from the manufacturer. That coating breaks down. Once that coating's gone, your lights turn yellow. The same coat, almost identical coating, is on the inside of these cars. Also, there's a there's a there's a coating on there. So what tends to happen is use. APCs or high alkali products, you're eventually on, on a regular basis, you're eventually going to break that coating. Um, one of the things that happened over the years is, is, is with our roll is they had an alcohol kicker. The, the alcohol kicker would go onto the surface. It would lift the color up off the surface. And same thing with these guys that are using heat to, 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 to repair plastics. Plastics. Yep. You're using the heat to pull the, the color up to the surface. You're only going to get away with that so many times. And so when you, if you don't have some type of coating or something on there that can seal that back in and, and stop that from happening, it's going to happen. The same thing with headlights. You can polish all the headlights in the world, but if you do not put a UV coating or something on them that can resist the environment, it's six months to a year. They're going to turn yellow again, if not sooner. That's one of the reasons why. Uh, people use ceramic coatings. They'll clear coat them. Uh, I've, I'm a huge fan of the Cerakote uh, trim headlight ceramic. Yeah, I just ordered some of that. Dude, those things are absolutely insane. But you have to make sure you get those lights perfectly clean. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> so yes, I do. Yes. So when I do headlights, I do all of my repairs. I get them down ready to coat. I hit them with uh, uh, the, the uh, 3D wipe with the blue shop towel on a roll. I then take IPA 5050 and hit them again. And I and then I then I do my coatings with the with the coating coating and make sure that you're wearing black gloves because that ceramic coating will soak into your skin and it will burn. Um, it has you gotta, a, it has a really you gotta nasty, grind it off. It has a really nasty kicker that will absolutely light your skin up. So when you're That's using seven mil nit seven mil nitrate gloves. Yep, you have to use the gloves on there because that, that stuff will tear you up. But but again, going back to you know to, to coatings, you can you can you're you're you, when you're putting a APC or something very that's too strong for the product, you can you can put it on there and it doesn't appear to have done anything. But over time, you are deteriorating that coating, that UV coating that's put on all of the materials inside that vehicle, and it's just a matter of time before it becomes a problem. And so a lot of times. You know, I always tell everybody when you're dealing with cleaning, you want to use the absolute minimum amount of cleaning required to do the optimal recall. And so I tend to, I have five or six cleaners that I use on the interior of a vehicle. If it's a very, very light dusting, I literally will use an interior detailer and wipe the wipe. I don't need to clean it. If it's, if it's mm -hmm. not dirty, it doesn't need to be clean. Um, right. and, and, you know, so, I, you know, so there are cars that I get that literally just need a wipe down, um, you know, and then, you know, why are you using a very, very caustic chemical to clean something that doesn't require it? And that's the one of the things that I try to explain to people is, is that we need to be doing as little of that as possible, so, you know, but again, you're going to have interiors that are nasty and you're going to have to step that up. Have I used mm -hmm. APCs on the interior of cars before? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
Yep. Um, but again, you have to use something to neutralize uh, those 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 products. So it's it's about understanding the chemistry. You have to, you know, if, if you're going to use a high alkali product on 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 a plastic, or on, you have to be able to neutralize it. Man, Man this flex ice and flex fire work just fine. Oh, uh, hey Matt, uh, yes, refresh my ride wants to jump in on the chat. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah, no Let problem. Me and Matt. Hold on. Hold on. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> Andy's muted. <laughs> there he is. What's up, bro? What up, refresh? What up, brother? Welcome to the party. What's going Happy on, my Saturday boy? Saturday night. What's up, Happy Saturday night, baby. What's up, man? Hey, Matt. Just, uh, we're just putting on some modifications. This new badge, aftermarket badge from Amazon alone, added five horsepower to this truck so well it's black it's black so it's seven. it's black right so we, what we did is my son bought a truck is uh so check this out my son who is parker who is going to be 19 this coming year has now had this is now his fourth vehicle um the last one he bought on his own money was a 2011 mustang gt five liter okay. he changed the oil and didn't understand that it was an 8.2 quart motor not five quarts. Oh boy! Well, ran it all summer with that, and guess what we did? Burn. Spun a main bearing, but cleaned the car up, put it on marketplace, sold it for with a hurt motor for six grand. Right. Hundred seventy thousand miles. But when it happened, immediately the car was shut down and towed to my house, so that hopefully they can just do main caps and be done. Right. So, well, again, hopefully. I mean, like when the kid went today to, to buy the car, like it starts, it doesn't make a noise. Because I did drain all the oil. We put oil in the car, and uh, but we were very upfront with the guy. I mean, he drove it onto the trailer, but it's it's a hurt motor. Trust me, it's hurt bad. But uh, well, there's nothing wrong could... with doing that as long as you announce it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, we very clear in the listing. But anyway, he bought this new 2017 Chevy Silverado, which is a work truck. It's the cab and a half, black bumper. It's a nice little truck, though. I mean, it's got forty thousand miles on it. He's got a full warranty, so. He wanted to spruce it up here with a few few improvements. Uh, we were showing the guests tonight how to do this at home, which is basic tools. But the lesson learned is that these aftermarket cheap black letterings are really should be about this big, and they're only that big. Yeah. So, it's nice so how come I can't see anything? Huh? Why is my screen black? Uh, oh. That's crazy. So that's what we're doing. Took about what time is it? Eight forty-three. I mean, BS and a lot, but I mean, four bad or three. Take it off three of those. Put three back on and two other decals. I mean, honestly, you could do that in an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, if, I had, if I had, if I was at my shop, I mean, it would have been less than an hour. So. If you weren't on the live, you would have probably done it in half the time too. Well, I don't yeah, have anything. I mean, literally, I'm using a heat gun from. Uh, you know, Harbor Freight, Walmart towels, yeah. dental floss from my bathroom, and some gooby gone. That's that's how we accomplish it. So. You got to make do when you can, man. You know, it's funny. Yeah. You know, usually, you know, because I've done my share of badging and debadging and something like that. I've, you know, I've got to pay 150, 200 bucks to do that. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I've, you know, I've charged. It really depends on, on what, it, what it is. But I've, I've done, I've, I've completely debadged. You know, normally, like if I debadge a vehicle and do all everything, you know, it's it's sixty five to one twenty five, depending on, you know, on, I can do all, I can I can debadge a vehicle in probably about forty five. Yeah, I mean, the, the key is, you know, with having the right heat gun and the right tools. I mean, at the end of the day, this, the lesson with this whole thing comes down to two things. Number one, you can do this at your own home. Uh, with very minimal tools, very minimal skill, just take your time. You can do it. Right. But there are a lot of people that say, I just, I don't even want to deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. So the lessons to be learned are this. Number one, having the right tools are important. But number two, when you do buy the cheaper, you know, stuff off of Amazon or eBay, and we kind of cover this in the live, it's not going to work out how you think it's going to be. Right. And if you don't have with any experience of putting these on, I can see to where, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to watch a TikTok or YouTube video where it's like, okay, we make, and you'll see the, I don't think I posted the video of the other side on TikTok yet, but you'll see I make the sense of it, and then I get this out of the box and realize this isn't going to match up, so right. we have to abandon the sticker, and 
I came to the other side, measured some stuff up, and that's how I basically figured it out. But if you're not familiar with this stuff, you could ha- you could have had a bad night with yeah. trying to put these on. You would have ruined ruined these st- these deals. So, but the moral of the story here is, I tell everybody, don't assume anything. Correct. You're dealing with badging. Pull all of your stuff out of the box. Everything out of the box. Pull it out look of the at table it. and look at everything before you even get started working. So if you're in a situation here. Let's say you you know the customer is very picky. You go and rip all these badges off. Then you pull everything out of the box, and it's not what the customer wants. Now what? So what I do, and you, I saw you do it because you called your your whoever it was and said, "Hey, my son." So yeah. what we do, what I do is, is I saw it saved myself a lot of trouble by pulling everything out of the box, out of the bag, because you don't know whether it's damaged or not. But there's a letter missing. Trust me, all this stuff has happened. I've pulled badges out of out of out of boxes, and there's been letters missing. Um, or they're wrong. Or they're wrong. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, or the, it's the wrong molding. So you, you don't want to go. So I always pull all of my stuff out, put it out on the on on the bench, and go through and make sure that what I'm what I've got in that box is what's going on the truck. Then I actually mm-hmm. start working on the vehicle. Um, because if we're in a situation where you go through all the labor to pull all those badges off, and then you tell the customer bring the car back, and you don't charge them, and they decide not to bring the car back, you just ate the labor of pulling the badges off, and you just ate the labor of of, of whatever you bought. And I, I've, I've been in that situation before. You know, customers don't come back. I have a bag sitting in my in my you know the guy never, never, never called me back. Yeah, no, it can happen. You know, the other thing is is and and I stopped doing this is you know I would say customers would say hey you know they're let's say the car's in for a correction and coding, right. and um, you know one of the things I say is hey while you're in there you know would you take you know Teslas were a big one would you pull these badges off put the blacked out badges on or whatever it is and the same thing goes true for PPF I would let customers bring their stuff in and then we would install it the issue with it was is exactly what we got into this evening and and it now turned into something that should have taken us less than an hour that now turned into three hours because we're having to go on their YouTube channel and look at it and maybe get something for it. Right. I just said, listen, I will install, I will change up stuff for you, but I am, I, I'm ordering the stuff. And I tell them the reasons right. why. Right. 99% of the time, it's never an issue. They're like, okay, that's fine. Then every once in a while, you get the one customer like we had with this restoration. This is what I want. Fine. But this is what we're going to have to modify the car and able to achieve what you want. It's going to cost you X amount of dollars. I don't care. Then that's fine. Right. But I just take it upon myself that, no, if I'm going to do it, and this is my son's car, obviously, but no, I'm ordering the stuff because the problem is you send me these things, like the stuff that he bought for the uh, bow ties, I promise you is not going to work. I've had people send me this stuff before. Well, that and like, you know, somebody says, hey, you know, I've got a CTS. Okay. So you order CTS badging. And if you didn't do the VIN number, you know, if the customer orders that and then you open it and it's a CTS, the, form, you know, or or form. Something like right. that happened. So they didn't because they got online and they ordered uh, a badge for a CTS where you were going to go in and order it through the VIN number, which would have told you that it's a CTS fee. And I'm just using that as an example only because I've had this happen. And so when I order stuff, I go in. And I, the first thing that I do is pull the VIN number. I go into the OEM and I get the OEM part number. Then I go after my aftermarket using the OEM back, you know, so a lot of the really good OEM products will show you that their product matches up to X number of part numbers. Okay. So when you're, do, when you're dealing with aftermarket, again, like I said, you, you can actually go in and, and use the, 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 stock, the factory uh, part number to order the OEM parts properly. Um, yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, the uh, the other thing that comes into play, you know, when we're talking just about doing part swaps, um, you know, know your limitations. Yeah. I, I know I've, through the years, because how I learned how to detail was through a guy who owned a body shop. You know, because yep. that's really what detailing was. So I learned a lot of, <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff that are body shop related. Um, so I've had people, you know, say, "Hey," and really with what I do with the restorations, obviously we turn a lot of wrenches. So, but if you're not comfortable with doing certain things, don't take that work on because what's going to happen is, and I can't tell you the number of times I have had to go rescue a friend who thought they could 
do something, whether it was a modification to a car, let's say a spoiler, or, you know, ground effects that are supposed to just be screw on, you know, type of things. Right. Mm -hmm. And because they're cheap parts, as we all know, the stuff doesn't work. So the point is, is, you know, know your limitations and don't take on work that you've never done. If it's going to be that way, then invite somebody over that knows what they're doing, just so you don't get yourself in trouble. Right. Because trust yeah. me, it, 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 these stories we're bringing up are because we've done them. Yeah. Okay. That's Everything awesome. that I tell you is every mistake that I've made yep. along the way. Yep. So that's where the story originated because I screwed something up at one point and I've learned that lesson. And, and, you know, we talked about writing checks this earlier this year, I had to do that on a car for a friend as well. And the problem with it was, is I went against my better judgment. It was a Ford Focus ST. It was, I forgot the year of the car. It had front PPF that was terrible and he wanted to sell the car. So he wanted it removed. And I said, initially I told him, no, I said, I, I don't want to remove the PPF because he told me the PPF was applied approximately a week after the front end was repainted seven years ago. this is going. <laughs> so against my better judgment, after telling him no, and the deal was, this, I said, listen, I said, it's not a matter of, is paint going to come off? It's going to be a matter of how much. How much, right. So he said, and I said, well, all right, I'll do it. I said, but, you know, you have to be responsible if the paint comes off for half the bill. Fair enough. Got to the very end of the bumper. And I think I actually have the time lapse of it. A piece that big came off. Right. Here's the problem with the car. It's that tri-coat yellow paint. Oh gosh! I see. I see Tyler shaking his head. Yeah. What, what car was that? I remember that. It was a Ford Focus ST, and I made a video about it. Yeah. Uh, it was back, it was back last year, sometime. Dude, to repaint a front bumper. So R and R on the bumper, prep, repaint because of the paint at a at a, not at a dealer. I'm talking at a at like a body shop that I know was cut me a break. It was still a thousand sixteen bucks. Yeah. Because you had to paint the whole bumper. There's no blending this paint right. and the other thing was is hoping that the new paint's tent was going to match the rest of the car i mean wow. it was a it was a potential night it all worked out but good god was yeah because you did get a situation where they can't match it up and they got to blend the fingers and, and or, or quarters wherever it is and uh you know whichever bumper it was obviously mm -hmm. front but um but and yeah. the hood and, and the hood, hood. And the hood, yeah. So you could have taken something that was potentially a thousand. By the way, a thousand my price. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Um, had he had to blend three panels, that was a five thousand dollar repair. Yeah. For yeah. something this big. Yeah. So again, know what you're getting yourself into, and it's it's gut wrenching when you have to do that. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And that's one of the things too. I mean, I was I was brought up in you know the touch up in the body business. You know, dad, my dad ran three body shops. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, a lot of what I did was my touch up business. So I, I did a lot of, I, we did what basically when I, started, uh, we did, uh, condition reports. So we walk, we'd walk a dealership lot. We'd go into the manager and say, Hey, you have X number of cars. This is what you got wrong with them. And then he would, we would go in and correct them. Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, and we, we would polish, polish them, uh, paint them. And then also we're at the body shop, but you know, where I excelled in my dad's body shop, I was all customer was unhappy about orange peel or nibs or paints in the wrong place. So I ended up always ended up being the detail guy at the very end. So I, I love being able to put the icing on the cake. Um, but again, you know, you, you, you're, a, you're like I am. We, we were brought up uh, in a, in a different mode. So oh, yeah. a lot of things that we can, we can do and understand that, that, you know, just detailing cars are not going to teach you. Um, and we, we've done, we've, we've made our share of mistakes. And so, oh, yeah. I always tell everybody, you know, one of the frustrating things is when I tell people that and you have some of the younger guys go on, you know, that they, they laugh at you. Like, you know, what you're telling them can't happen. And, uh, and they just don't know, man. They have no idea. They don't have the experience you guys have. Oh, it happens. Trust me. Guys, Trust me. They're get bit one time. They're going to go, oh, man, I should have listened to that dude. <laughs> Sometimes we all it's best just to keep your mouth shut and just open your ears, especially yeah. when guys have 30 years experience. It, it just makes sense. You know what I mean? By the way, here's what we did. So, well, it's not only that experience. We're black. We had our gurus that taught us. 
Right. And that's shining hey. up the tires. Yep. Hi. <laughs> What's up, buddy? We made them black. Hey, don't the child labor laws kick in at some point? Not to your own business. <laughs> and by the way, you know Max, speaking of getting banned, Max had a monetized TikTok channel. Did you know that? No. He did. He had like 20-something thousand followers on his channel. Mm-hmm. He was, I mean, he was making like 20 bucks a month, too. You know, that was like mad money for an eight-year-old. Um, and he went on to do a live by himself. And he got from it. No, that's right. One time, and then the second time, somebody else reported his account because he was like, I don't know, you know, armor rolling a tire, you know, and understand when I say armor roll a tire, that's like the general term for putting tire shine on. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, it's, you're, you know, the report was like, you know, the child's in a dangerous situation. Oh, it's my like, God. But this is, come on now with the foolishness. I can't. Did, did you see the one where the, the, they had the kid that was autistic? Uh-uh. Oh, there were. There was a parent that had a kid that was autistic, and part of the, the, the of, of helping him, and part of his therapy, is this the, the 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 kid would do the wheels and the tires on his car, uh-huh. and made, somebody made a huge scene about this autistic kid having to work. Basically, they were trying to make it that you know that the the, the parent was taking full advantage of the kids. You mean that oh, autistic hold kid? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Did you not know that about me? No. Yeah. Very high functioning, obviously, but he is. Yeah. But there was a scenario. And and guess what is part of his therapy? Am I actually talking about the same kid that was in the one that I thought that made somebody made a big deal about it? Yeah, that was my son. Oh, wow. That's Max. That's that's (laughs) mine. Maxie. Yeah. That's Max right there. I'm literally talking about the same thing that I saw. So this is him. Oh, yeah. It's Max. Oh my gosh! Keep it up, kid. You're doing. It's great. part of his therapy. Oh my so, god! You mean you mean to tell me that if I have my little eight year old daughter or my ten year old son outside, they just want to see what daddy's doing? I give him a go ahead, just this uh, you know, put some 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 gloss on this tire. No, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. Uh, as far as it not being illegal, it's not illegal. Um, hold on. So a long time ago, obviously. Put you guys here for a second. Uh, you know, a long time ago, and my flag is falling down. Due to farms, kids work on farms. So if a, if you have your own business, a child can work at any age. Yeah. Um, you know, this was just somebody who was not, you know, just trying to be hateful. You know, Max is on the spectrum. He's a very high function kid. I, we're actually starting to think he's probably more Asperger's than autism at this point. Mm. Uh, like Max has trouble reading, but Max. Like you can give him the technical manual to like a roof house and Max can read that. I mean, he would at five years old would like take small, like, you know, little like one stroke engines from like a weed eater. This is someone mm-hmm. put back together. He, I mean, he's yeah. like, if you, if you saw him on the surface, like at school, like he struggles. Yeah. But you do eighth grade math. Right. It's the crazy. Yeah. Wow. And he's a, he's a, I high-end lighting and sound tech for a company and again it's it's it's, it's it has to do with the you know they're they're very high functioning and uh i think we lost we lost mcdunn yeah but Where'd he go? yep i don't know he might pop back. i'm actually gonna kill this here in a minute because i actually gotta get my kids car, my kids uh car back yeah, no problem but, uh, Couple things. Number one, everybody, thanks for the live. It's yeah, for, I've done one. Thanks for being on this thing. It's been awesome. Um, I work on doing more lives. The problem is just during the day, I am so busy with so many things. It's just really hard to do a live during the day when you're just, you know, we've got thousands of things that are going on. But I really enjoy doing them, especially, you know, I thought this would be a good one because it's something that's kind of user friendly. A lot of people would want to do this. It's kind of a quick and easy how-to, which I think is – don't open the graduate yet, which is a kind of a quick and easy thing. Um, and I hope you guys learned stuff. I mean, this was a, this is a great – I don't know about you guys, but I thought it was. Yeah. I love it too, and I love it because it's a situation where, you know, these are things that if you understand how this stuff works and can get this stuff down, you can make money on it. If somebody, up, if somebody comes up and says, hey, debadge my vehicle, you would have been afraid of it. Now that you've seen somebody do it, now right. you can – 
people, hey, I can I can do this, or you now know enough to know you can get on YouTube and look up the the different ways of doing it. And 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 I always tell everybody is putting more tools in your box, it um, is elevating your game, ele- elevating your game. I mean, hopefully it, somebody can make some more money. So it's true. If you are doing ceramic coins, maybe you can add a hundred bucks to a detail. Yeah. That's something you could do before. Well, that's why I do touch up still. I mean, I you know I I can go in and I can come in. I've I've had people that come and bring a touch up to me, and I'll say, hey, listen, you know, we we do detailing, and oh, I didn't realize you do that. You know, they'll drop the car off, and now now I just went from a hundred twenty five dollar touch up to a five hundred dollar detail, and then oh, what about ceramic coatings? Well, I can do this and that and the other, and now you've got a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar job. Oh, can you take the can you take these badges off? I've been wanting to do, do that. Oh yeah, that's a hundred bucks. Boom, you know. I'll- yeah, something that could be a somebody, you know, this is a big challenge, and, and this will be kind of the last thing because I'm going to go, but it's this. Let's say somebody does call you for an interior. We, we all know we can't charge a ton of money for an interior, but I do want something deep badged. I need my headlights taken care of, and I got one little spot on the bumper for some paint transfer. You could have turned 100 and before, you know, they weren't going to be buying a $400 interior exterior detail for you, but right. now $125 interior. And your extra services, it's now a five hundred dollar deal, right? That's well, that, how you make money in detailing, guys. That is how you make money. Yeah. Well, that and you're also solving a problem for your customer, even if you're not doing the full thing. You're solving a customer's problem. The next time they need something done, they're going to tell their neighbor, "Hey, I got a guy." Yep. And 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 this comes down to like I, you know, the guy that used to work for my dad, the painter for my dad, has his own business now. I send all my paint work to that guy. Customer comes in. I did today. I had to, he had a there was a, they had an oil leak. And their mechanic said they needed to power wash the motor. So bucks this morning and about 45 minutes, I power wash the motor. She's got a pain issue. I sent that to her. She's going to bring the car back to me to get the touch up done. She's doing a coating and all that stuff. And we're going to, but we're going to wait until the spring, you know, so it's, it's about solving problems for your customers and making money when you can. And, uh, you know, and, and it's also about making lifetime customers. Um, that cust- that person will always be your customer if you treat them right, even if you don't serve the purpose that, that that's necessary at the time. Um, you know, you, you're you're making a contact, you're making a relationship with a person. Uh, you know, and if it monetizes, it monetizes. If not, that you know, I have customers all the time that call me up and say, "Who? Who? Did you have a windshield guy? Do you have a wheel guy?" You know, I tell customers too when they leave out of there, right before they leave out of there, say, "Listen, if you have anything on your vehicle that needs to be done, call me." You know, the one quick thing to the kind of final thought I'll leave you guys with, you know, this time of year is hard for everybody because of the weather. Right. Global guys. But things like, for instance, headlight restoration this time of year, it's winter time. It's going to be snowing. You could, you could knock out 10 of those a day, charge 50 bucks, make $500. Yeah. Okay. Just think about it. It's not hard. Um, in fact, I'll probably, you know what, next week I'm going to try to do. Uh, my son's car needs it, and he's coming back from the Marine Corps uh, on leave for Christmas. Um, I might do that as a live next week on how to properly sand yeah. and restore lights. Oh, Dad, we're, not because... <laughs> we're not sanding. Um, <laughs> quick and easy skill that, like, you could almost make a side business out of it, and wow. you could hit it one day. So, guys, I got to go. Hey, I appreciate, first off, everybody here. Big H, sorry, man, that you got kicked off the end. Tyler, thank you. Mike, thank you. Big H, as always, guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next.